Welcome back to Darlington Raceway. Heavy cloud cover, but no rain in sight. That's the good news as we're set to go 400 miles. Budweiser official beer in NASCAR and proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award. The fastest qualifier at each NASCAR Winston Cup race honors Elliot Sadler, who has his first career Bud Pole. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Dodge Pace Car set to roll off. And here's the starting lineup. Sadler for Robert Yates there with Ryan Newman, who has 11 front row starts and 49 Winston Cup tries. Jerry Nadeau and Jimmy Spencer. Big things expected from row two today. Jeff Gordon, one of Darlington's past masters, and Kurt Busch there in row three. Ward Burton and last year's winner of this race, Sterling Marlin. In row four, completing the top ten, Michael Waltrip and Todd Bodine. Let's see if we can get old Sterling to talk to us. Hey, uh, Sterling Marlin, this is DW up in the TV tower. Bud, how you read? Loud and clear there, DW. How's the old silver bullet looking today? I believe it's pretty good. We, uh, same car we won with last year. It really ran good in last practice. Uh, really stayed good on our long run, so uh, I think we're in good shape. Well, it ought to be a lot easier this year. You don't have to come from the back. You're already up to the front, so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on you, bud. I got my money on you today. Stand on that bad boy. We'll do it. 10 4. 43 cars here. Nobody went home. As you have a look back through the rest of the field. And a lot of talent starting deep. Look at Winston Cup champ Stewart and Mark Martin back in row 14. A lot of Winston Cup wins at Darlington back there. You look at Dale Jarrett and guys like that. Jeff Burton as well starting way deep in the field. But this joint's not about going fast for one lap. It's about going fast for 400 miles and staying off of that old wall. You don't want to be saying hello wall. Yesterday's Bush race rained out. They will run tomorrow at 11 a.m. and you'll see that on FX. Larry, Mike, I wonder if there's any other wall in racing that's been hit as much as this one has. <laughs> I doubt it. You want to hit it just the right amount at the right place. <laughs> that's right. Here we're going to look at the weather. Air temperature is 63 degrees. Now here's kind of a key based on practice yesterday. That track temperature is 75 degrees. In their practice yesterday, 25 degrees cooler. 50 degrees, track's going to be a lot greasier. Cars are going to slide around much more today. But the good thing is, it's not raining. At least it's dry. Dick Bergren. This morning, NASCAR official David Hoots told the drivers meeting that compromise is the best strategy for Darlington. Take, 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 he said, will not get you to the end. What he really meant is, this is one tough old place. Be careful. To Steve. Well, Dick Dalen, our junior, got off to a slow start this year, but his last two finishes, he's finished second and third. His best finish here at Darlington in six starts is fourth. He did that a year ago. His crew chief, Tony Urey Jr., told me this morning, Jr. says he's got the best car he's ever had here at Darlington. Matt Yoakum. Steve, your average team here on pit road has about 12 sets of tires in their pits. That's about $19,000. Now, the average tire window about 60 to 65 laps, but talking to a lot of crew chiefs, they expect you're going to see short pitting. A lot of teams like Tommy Baldwin here in the 7 and James Itz in the 10, they'll short pit. Have their car pit early to try to make up more time on the track, which changes everybody else's strategy. Keep an eye on that today. The Genie's Alasco. Dale Jarrett deferred to Elliott Sadler's notes at Rockingham, and it got him a victory. And today, the 88 car you see on this track is the one that ended up in victory lane. So DJ decided to go with the same plan. After the final practice on Saturday, the 88 team went to their teammates and said, tell us everything you're doing. They followed the setup to a T. Let's see if they have the same results. One to go as they come by. We'll be racing at Darlington in one lap. And Darrell, every race we've seen so far this year, after the green flag, everybody's fought for the bottom of the racetrack. That probably won't be the case here. No, here you're just going to see a lot of fighting. They're going <laughs> right. to be fighting for every, any space they can find because there's just not enough room on this joint for 43 cars. That's the hard thing, Mike. You practice, practice, kind of out there alone all the time. All of a sudden, you start racing with people. And somebody's right up alongside and you say, you can't do that. How would you like to have been in this race when they started 85 or 90 cars back in the 50s? Well, according to some folks, I was. Oh, but I just want to set it straight that <laughs> I wasn't. 
Michael Waltrip went to the back of the field because his car was damaged heavily in practice, had to go to a backup car, Kurt Busch a backup engine. Yeah, he, Michael Waltrip crashed with about 10 minutes to go in practice. Here's our race analysis, 43 cars. No one had to go home, only 43 cars here, 293 laps, 400 miles. Tires, there's our key graphic right there. You heard Mer Matt Yoakum talking about that. Every, there's, the strategy is every time the yellow flag comes out, you come to pit road for four tires. There's no two tire changes here. This place is like a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, just eats the tires up. Field in turn three, like Atlanta last week, this track was reconfigured. That press box sat in what used to be turn one, but Highway 151 right behind the track, limited expansion, so they rebuilt the back stretch into the front stretch, and so now the small end of the track is now turns three and four. The big turn is turns one and two. St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, instead of wearing of the green here, Darrell, we're gonna be waving of the green. Okay, old Waltrip, old Waltrip, just reach your pair as I tell you, pull those belts tight. All right. Oh, boogity, oh, boogity, oh, boogity, let's go racing, oh, boys. Mike Joy talking about it at the high line. Ryan Newman in the 12 car. He gets a jump on Elliott Sadler through one and two and pulls him down the back stretch. Yeah, Ryan just had to, you know, had to right. He was up there on the outside. That's a good, that's where you want to be going into turn one, and it paid off. But here comes Elliott charging back on the inside. Got that Yates. Yates horsepower wound up, and he's going for the lead. Right there, folks, is where you've got to let up. The guy on the outside has got to let the guy on the inside go, or you'll wreck. You can't go through there too wide. About the best thing you hope for when you go into turn one is that guy will push you up and you can put the crossover move on him. I'm sure we'll see that a lot today. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matt Kenseth did not get off to a particularly good start, but it doesn't appear there's anything wrong with his car. Just being a little cautious and letting tires come up to temperature and pressure. That's the whole thing here. It's always being cautious. Don't put yourself in a position where somebody can wreck you. And you can go out there and you can run your car hard in the first eight or 10 laps, but you're gonna pay the price 30 or 40 laps in the run. You're gonna use the good up in those tires way too early. Jerry Nadu coming hard in that black army Pontiac at the bottom of your screen, took second from Newman and now he sets sail on the leader. You don't see many people drive by Ryan Newman, no. I can tell you. <laughs> Nadu's pumped and that Pontiac looks good this weekend. It's the best we've seen a uh, Pontiac run so far this year. Only one top 10 finish for a Pontiac in the first four races. Jeff Gordon drops under Jimmy Spencer, who may have brushed the wall at turn one. And you, and you, see, you see Sterling was right there, and because Jimmy got in trouble, Sterling had to lift, and it almost got Sterling in trouble. Coming off the two over there is a treacherous place. Rusty Wallace underneath Ward Burton. This is for eighth place. He's been getting about a car lap. He is definitely on the move. Things happen quick right now. With all these cars bunched up, you gotta be real cautious, but you wanna pounce on a guy when you get an opportunity. You were riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. there in the eight car. He started 16th, he's all the way up to 10th, so he's on the move as well. And Jimmy Johnson just moved past Todd Bodine to take over 11th in the and I mean, 48. And I know none of us picked Jimmy Johnson in, the, in our picks, but I'm gonna tell you, he was maybe one of the best cars in that final practice yesterday, the 48 car. Yeah, I think the 48 and the 20. Here comes Jeff Gordon underneath. The 12 of Ryan Newman and trouble Jerry Nadu. The second place car spins. And he'll probably he I gets said, it turned back around because if he hadn't, he'd have went to the bottom of the racetrack. The caution is out. Did he make contact? I don't think so, Darrell. Matt Kinsa spins coming off turn two. I think he might have got tagged from behind trying to slow up. That that can happen so easily off that corner over there. You come through three, uh, one and two wide open and somebody lets up in front of you, you can't help but get in the back of them. I don't think they do hit anything. He went in all by himself, Daryl, and I'm not sure if the car got upset on entry or if something happened in the middle of the corner. I don't see damage on the car whatsoever. I think he was very, very, very lucky. I thought Nadu was French, not Irish. But this weekend, everybody's Irish. And <laughs> you take all the shamrocks you can get. Well, he just made a big withdrawal from the luck bank. I can tell you that. <laughs> When you're running second, you spin in front of the whole field coming at you in the middle of the corner. And a car, to, somebody doesn't run into you and you don't hit the wall. Uh, that's I three, guess I would that's call three that, trips. I guess I would call that good luck. You said it. 
we've only run about six laps. I, I'm going to anticipate most of the leaders will stay out, but probably Jerry Nadeau, Matt Kenseth will be to pit road for four fresh tires. Yeah, the back part of the field will come down pit road. Here he goes. He just gets in there. That's where That's Jamie happened. McMurray That's... clipped Matt Kenseth in the 17, Jamie McMurray in the 42. That was right over in the middle of turn two after Jerry Nadeau had spun. You know, I think Larry, and I'm, I'm not sure we'll see it from further back. Jerry's already around, but you can see he was all by himself and did not make contact with the wall or another car. Let's see if Kenseth comes into play here. They all have to go to the apron because they can't see for the smoke. That's what happens. Everybody goes down on the apron. They can't see for the smoke. You get down there, it's real dirty and sandy. The, that apron is just really, really slick. There's where Kenseth and McMurray got together yep. right there. Yep. You get down on that apron, and even when you're trying to come in pit, we'll probably see it before the day's over with down here in turns three and four. <laughs> There's Nadu. He's already turned around three times and headed in the right direction. You know, you know, I just, Jamie was down in the very, down in the bottom there, and it's so dirty, and there's so much sand and grit down there that got on his tires, and he shoved up into to Matt Kenseth, who was trying to avoid Nadu. 19 cars stayed out, but I want to tell you one surprise, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he gets him four fresh tires on his first caution. But be ready. Be ready. Great flag. They're all around. underway just half a lap ago with Elliot Sadler leading Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin, and Jeremy Mayfield. Further review showed that the secondary collision in that caution, not a rookie mistake by McMurray, but Kenseth trying to get as far away from Jerry Nadeau as possible. Yeah, I just don't think that uh, Matt knew that, thought about anybody being down any lower than he was. Plus, he could see Nadeau out the corner of his eye over there. I think he was trying to pull down and get away from him. Everybody continues on the lead lap. Here's Matt Yoko. And Jerry Nady told his crew he just didn't know what happened. He says, that's never happened to me. That's the first time. He did say, though, that the car was a little loose on entry. Four tires and a chassis adjustment to Steve Burns. Well, Matt Dalenhart Jr. had fought his way from 16th up to 7th, but his race car early on had gotten very tight from the center off. So they took four tires, made an air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment. 
I mean, the thing about a race car here, if it's tight in the beginning, it's only going to get tighter as you burn that fuel off and as you go into a run. Well, and what happened to Nadeau? He goes in with that left side down on the apron. When that car starts up the racetrack, you, most of the time you catch it with the throttle, and he probably gasped it a little too quick, and the back end jumped out. Spencer going after. Oh, here we go. Trouble on the front. Jack Sprague in the zero car. Straighten it up. Keeps it out of harm's way. Caution is out again. Man, everybody's running into each other. There's been about two or three wrecks down this front straightaway. The leader's going into turn three. He's trying to get it going here and stay on the lead lap, and he will. Got these cars all bunched up like this on the start, and they just can't get away from each other. And I'll tell you, a good handling car will run over a bad handling car here more than any place else. That's what happened to Tony Stewart last year in that race where he ran over Buckshot Jones. When your car's handling real good, you're back in the throttle. You're making time. The cat in front of you is having a little bit of trouble. And he lets up out of the gas, and you're going to run into him. When's the last time you saw two cautions in a row and no concrete contact? Yeah, we had the, the wall. We talk about the wall, and here comes Nadu on the outside of Sprague here. Looked like Sprague just was down low, trying to keep, uh, you know, trying to stay in the throttle up off of turn four. And the thing just come around. The track must be really slick right now. Well, I tell you another thing, Dale. Remember, it's rained here since one o'clock yesterday. Started. Stop raining finally this morning. This racetrack is what we call green. There's no rubber on it. There's not a lot of grip. When you come off a corner here and you got down underneath somebody like that and you got a lot of steering input, got the wheels really cut hard left and you're trying to stay in the throttle, the thing just will spin out with you just like that. So Jack Sprague makes a withdrawal from the luck bank. Another one. You make deposits to the concrete. Withdrawals from the luck bank. Looks like most of our leaders are going to come to pit road now, except for the ones that pitted on the last caution. The only one that stayed out that didn't pit the last caution was Jimmy Spencer in the seven car. But here comes uh, Elliot Sadler, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Sterling Marlin, Tony Stewart, all of those cars that did not pit the last time. And see, this is the ideal scenario for the guys that pitted on the first caution, because now they're at the front of the field. Dick Bergman. Well, Sterling Marlin and his crew knew that if they didn't pit the first time, that this time around they were going to lose a lot of track position. They decided that was okay. Sterling said the car is a little bit loose. They've adjusted the weight distribution. Steve. Ryan Newman has gotten extremely tight off of turn four. They'll change four tires, one round down on the left rear. Let's go to Matt Yoko. And Elias Sadler, the leader, is in his car with a little loose. Meanwhile, the 24, Jeff Gordon, making a chassis adjustment. His car was loose everywhere on entry in the center and off. As Ray Hall puts a left on the left rear and the 24 and the 25 is going to be everybody off. So it's going a lot of them going out there at one time. But I'm going to tell you, Darrell, what I'm hearing from most people is they're a little bit loose. loose. You have to be careful not to over adjust that car because when this rubber gets back on the racetrack from racing on it, it's going to start tightening up. The caution a break for Matt Kenseth and Jamie McMurray, who were both involved in the first caution. They are both back in the pits for further repair. 31 cars making some repairs the left front of it. It's been a lot of cars banging into each other. Look at the McMurray's car. Right side of your screen, Jack Sprague. You're just coming off that corner. You, you, your car really is wanting to push. It's trying to push the nose, but you keep steering into it, steering into it, and then all of a sudden it bites and the back end will pop out. From Robbie Gordon's on board. Oh, that's where he got damaged. I saw him down here working on his. He now, got he's got damage. Yeah, he got Terry Levani. Terry Levani got Brett Bodine in that silver CLR car. It's like going to the fair and riding in bumper cars. You see right there in third, talk about a roller coaster in the first 14 laps. Jerry Nadeau in the 01 car. Remember, he started this race third, spun out. He was all the way at the rear of the field. He was working his way forward. Now, he has stayed out on this caution, so he's back to third. Ebb and flow. <laughs> Boy, those guys, that, do they ever need a good run? The first four races of the 2003 season, they have finished 22nd or worse. I don't think that's indicative of how they performed, but that's what the results have been. Jeannie, what did Tony Stewart do on his stop? Well, it was pretty routine. Four tires. Tony coming in said, look, the car is a little tight, but it's tight behind these guys, and he's got to believe that when he finally passes several cars, it will be okay. So they didn't make any adjustments, just gave him four new tires. Kind of like Larry said, Mike, right now you got to be careful. You don't want to over adjust your car. Uh, this this track will go through a change or two here before too long. Our aerial coverage from Budweiser and you see Darlington Raceway. The grandstand outside turn two at the upper left. That's the big end of the track. This egg shaped oval. The small end now turns three and four. For the seventh time in his Winston Cup career, Jimmy Spencer is a leader at Darlington Raceway. 
pace car pulling in. He'll bring Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jerry Nadu, John Andretti, and Jeff Green to the green flag. Mon Mongo likes this view. <laughs> yeah. You see the pace car dropped him off there, 50 miles an hour is what they bring up to speed. We'll watch the Fox tracks here as he starts climbing for the restart. One through third, then the high gear, start finish line at 100 miles an hour. Got his hands full of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car behind him. 140 miles an hour entering turn one on the restart. Pick the throttle up real early in the middle of one and two. They'll come off turn two onto the back stretch at almost 160 miles an hour. If we can't if we keep up with the speed of these cars over the longer they run the slower they get. They just keep getting slower and slower because they keep losing grip. Single file at the front among the drivers who did not make pit stops, but look back here where everybody's trying to gain as much ground as they can, Daryl, in just these first few laps while the tires are fresh. Well, when you got everybody bunched up like that, people are letting, you know, they can't, it's hard to race here. So if somebody gets up out of the groove, everybody goes by you. Lead change, Dale Jr. Brings the has, fans to their feet. Has a little fresher tires than Jimmy Spencer, and I think Jimmy made a smart move there, you know, give and take. Jeff Gordon on the move up after that pit stop, battling side by side with Sadler. That's for 17th position. Matt, why did Jimmy Spencer not pit? Well, Mike, back in the bottom box, Tommy Ball was known as two tire Tommy. Today he said <laughs> it would be four tire Tommy, but why no pit Tommy? Well, there's only a couple laps really on the tires each chance, and uh, you know, I figured the first 17 cars that pitted the first time wouldn't pit this time, so. I mean, we'll hope, hopefully we get a caution lap 10, 15 laps, and it'll be worthwhile, but we'll wait and see. Hey, Mike, I bet you go back to him in a little while and say he won't do that anymore. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Spencer now trying to hold back John Andretti. Boy, I tell you what, they are racing hard. Now, in just a moment, President Bush, along with the prime ministers of England and Spain, will be addressing the nation, and you'll be able to see the president's address over on Fox News Channel. Here on the Fox Network, race coverage will continue. Well, Jimmy Spencer, he's losing about a position a lap right now. Mark Martin in the sixth car, who started back in 27th. This is a battle for fourth with Mark and Jimmy. I know it shows a lot of confidence in your car and your driver when you'll stay out on a, on a caution like that. But, Larry, you know just like I do, you've got to put four tires on, particularly early in the race like this, where the track is so green and you need all the grip you can get. And the longer they go, the worse it's going to get. Tony Stewart right behind Sterling Marlin, Jimmy Johnson, you're watching from Johnson's onboard, and they have sliced their way through traffic in a hurry. And they're, they're taking no prisoners, Mike. I was watching them, and when they catch them, they pass them. If you don't get out of their way, it might be one one to you. Brett Bodine not in his own car being passed. Sterling Marlin making the try on the bottom of the racetrack. The reason is Bodine's running only a partial schedule in his own number 11 to fill the field. Now, the now, now look, car came Mike, and see how that see how that bottled everything up. He couldn't get off that corner. The guy on the inside couldn't make the pass because you got to be able to slide out and it bottled up everybody behind him. That's what causes wrecks here. But there Jimmy Johnson in the 48. He was all the way down on the apron in turn two and that was kind of a gutsy move this early in the race and there it is. He's in trouble. Right. Yeah. He just got into Sterling, and Sterling got into the wall, I believe. Sterling's left front fender is killed as well. This track. Oh, there, Sterling's in the wall. Turn one. Hard. Bob Labonte's in trouble. 18 oh, cars. 18 oh, cars wrecking. How's your car, buddy? 29 You're cars right? spun. 74 is in it, and Sprague and Harvick are there. Caution is out. I mean, I think that was a Pretty product from what happened. All the way over here on the front stretch. That started off at turn two. Yeah, yeah, started over there. Got everybody wadded up there behind them, and they just know where to go. Trying to pass the slower car of Brett Bodine. Yep. This track is only so wide. Patience is a virtue, but gosh, Darrell, it's so hard to be patient. I don't think I've ever seen these guys racing as hard as they are right now early in a race like it, like this here at, uh, at this racetrack. Yeah, 48 cars going to have damage and certainly had probably ruined Sterling's day right there because he got damage on both sides of his car. This was coming in off the front he can't, stretch he, into turn one. Sterling can't turn the car. The left front fender's got the steering locked up. Let's look up toward the top of the frame right over here. Yeah, he's now it's going to unfold right here. 
Yeah, he, he just, the left front tire was rubbing on the fender and it wouldn't turn going in the corner. And there, Bobby Labonte, he, he may he have gets, got tagged from behind and he gets hit by Ke Kevin Harvick in the 29 as well. I, I don't think I've seen a race start here like this in a long time where everybody's so impatient. Now, under this caution, everybody's on pit road except for Dale Jarrett in 88 and Jeff Gordon in the 24. Everybody else is on pit road for four tires. Steve Burns. Larry Mack, Dale Earnhardt Jr. says car has freed up considerably. They'll make a small air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment. Four tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt Yoakum. And Tommy Baldwin came on the radio to Jimmy Spurs said, all right, we are going to pit this time. As they kick in a little bit of the sheet metal damage to the left rear corner, they're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Jimmy said his car was good, but he just needed some help up off the corner. It was just too tight. Dick Bergeron. Sterling Marlin, winner of this event last year. Car is really torn up, Mike. The right side of the car is well caved in. There's a big hole in the left front fender. They're going to have to remove the radiator. It has a puncture wound in it. Bobby Labonte is about two garage stalls down. Trunk has been ripped off that car. Nose is all pushed in. Boy, there's some beat up stuff awful early in this race. Again, this all began as Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Sterling were working in a tight pack there trying to pass other cars. Just maybe just misjudged a little on Jimmy's part, and he moved over into Sterling, got Sterling up in the wall. Sterling goes down here, and he must have a right front tire down, or else that left front is hung up in the fender, and he can't turn the car. He drives right into the wall. You saw Robbie Gordon shoot through there. Let's look from his point of view. Third caution of the day here at Darlington. Now you see why this track is too tough to tame. Top it off with gas or not? I got it, Chris. because so much is riding on your tire. And brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Pizza Hut. Now you can get our new freshly baked cinnamon sticks. And by Visa. Proud sponsor of NASCAR. 
This is a Visa race break along with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel in Darlington. Three caution flags already inside of the first 24 laps. And the driver and crew chief of the 48 car, that's Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals, have invited at the have been invited to the uh, yeah, NASCAR Red invited. Trailer <laughs> at the at the end of the day to discuss what happened. I guess we had a six or seven car bang up here, but a little history between Sterling Marlin and Jimmy Johnson. If we go back to the finish in Las Vegas, yes, things got kind of heated up right there on the last lap. You know, Sterling got in the 48 car, turned him around, and Jimmy wasn't very happy about that. So I'm sure NASCAR wants to sit these guys down and find out what's going on, guys. But there's one guy. I need to make sure they need to bring along with that deal, I think, is a spotter because I think they have a little bit of responsibility with this situation also. Things are heating up. Remember, Chad Canals cooled his uh, driver at that time, and let's see if this continues. Let's check in with Dick Bergeron, who is standing by during this visa race break with Sterling Marlin. Sterling, what happened out there? <laughs> I guess uh, started, didn't start a lap before. Uh, had a good run on a, on a solar car and uh, raced you all the way down in the corner and won, and, and uh, I had to let off or you wreck us both and uh, you know try to get through one and two and come on and then Jimmy got a good run on me off of uh, two and uh, got under me going in three side by side and uh, come up off four and I guess it was racing and you know, it wasn't Jimmy's fault, wasn't my fault, Jimmy just got loose and and uh, slid up with home bumpers and uh, turned us both in the fence and got in here it wouldn't turn. So, <laughs> so nothing fine. deliberate? No, uh, he just just racing, just racing deal and this Darlington, you know, I never seen you know the star of the race with so many people, three wide and I mean just driving like it's ten to go and this place you got to be patient. We tried to be, but we got caught up in it. It has been a wild race so far, Mike Joy. Well, he saw it like Daryl did. Now, on the restart, Dale Jarrett leads Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jerry Nadeau, who's led a charmed life so far, a little leprechaun in him today, and Jimmy Spencer. Here we go. What I see here today is the young is kind of restless. <laughs> at an early stage. Yeah. They need to calm down here a little bit. I, I, I mean, I can't tell you. I've never seen a race start like this here. Here comes Nadu with a run right up to the bumper at Junior. They're going to go inside Gordon for second place. Let's go to the pits and mat. And the young one, Jimmy Johnson, had to make two stops on pit road. One to service the car, then he came back in just to work on the cosmetic damage to the right front corner of that race car. Corey Quick put a big, huge piece of tape just to try to help the aerodynamics a little bit and help the cosmetic damage. Jeff Burton just took ninth place from Ricky Craven. Right up there against the bumper of his teammate, Mark Mark. You know, we had him on our Bush show yesterday. Started back in 37th. He said he had a good race car. He's pretty much backing it up. He's proven it. Junior inside of Gordon. That's second place changing. There's one thing, about it, yeah. one thing about a good race car here. It will find its way to the front. If it's any good at all. Craven. Holy cow. Had a run. Had to go way low to keep from getting into the back of Burton. But there's Bush to the outside. And he had to hurry up and get back up on the racetrack before they got to turn one. That will not work. This is such a momentum racetrack. I mean, you've got to carry speed all the time or you'll get past. Jimmy Spencer just went past Jeff Gordon, who's fading just a little bit here. Well, we've already seen two cases of where staying out on old tires. And when I'm saying old tires, that's four or five lap tires, is not working. It might be all right later, but it's not good right now. The track's not got any rubber on it. It's not got any grip in it. Those Roush cars right now, 8th, 9th, and 10th, the leader of that group is Mark Martin. Steve Burns in his pit. Mike, Mark Martin started 27th, already inside the top 10. The ironic part of that is crew chief Ben Leslie saying this morning that they were much better on the long runs, and the 99 has a problem. Coming out of turn two, he got into the wall, but now a lot of smoke, and I it's think just, Tony Stewart might have got into him after he had trouble. Yeah, they were, they were racing over there. I, I know he got into the wall. I'm not sure if anything else happened. I think it's tire smoke. I think the damage from the left rear, Darrell, is from Tony Stewart. But that car is in no hurry to get back to the garage. And the, the caution is out now. Caution is out now. He could not get to pit road because he was trapped on the high side of the racetrack through three and four. Roush Racing plagued with several weeks of engine failures for a variety of reasons. And a lot of smoke here from Jeff Burton's car. Yeah, I, I, I got to believe it's tires because, I mean, he got up in the outside wall over there off the two real hard. He and Tony Stewart were racing off that corner over there, and uh, he and Tony made some contact. Jack Roush has seen that scene far too often in the last four weekends. Well, now, is there damage to Stewart's car? The right front of Stewart's may have and I think probably clipped the left rear of Burton's when Burton's car slowed dramatically. 
Tony was down on the apron right there, Daryl. Yeah, you see some. Yeah, you see smoke coming out of Burton's car. Oh, it's well, that who smoke, hit him? Smoke's <laughs> coming out of Burton's car. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks identical to his yeah. problem in Atlanta yeah, last week. Yeah, and then he got in his own oil, I think, and got into the fence. When I looked up, he and Tony looked like they were making contact. See right here, right here, right here. Tony comes up on him, and yeah, he shot Burton into the wall. Or Ricky Craven. No, I believe that's that, that's. I, it's hard to say. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wait till he gets in a bit. I know what's going on from Ricky Wright. A little fluid there on uh, the tear off on Rudd's roof cam. Possibly from Jeff Burton's car. Well, Jeff. That's a lonely feeling right there. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. He's going to go from fifth to about 25th because most of the leaders stayed out. But remember, he stayed out on the last caution. Dale Jarrett, all these guys came in. Matt? And Larry, to answer your question, one reason why they're coming down, Jeff says the car is just way too loose. They've made a wedge adjustment. They're also going to back up their track bar adjustment they made on the last stop. He says they just feel like they're going to lose way too much time on the racetrack. That's why he's getting up the track position now, trying to fix the car early so they can gain it back later. See, that's what happens, Mike. When you come down there early and make a big change, you were too tight to start with, and you make a big change, and then you get the thing way, way too loose. And so he had to come back in and put it back like it was and, and find the middle. That's what happens here. You put it back like it was and leave it alone. Did Jeff Burton's engine let go? We'll check when we come back. All right, lap 34, position 14. Motor feels any different than what you had yesterday? I'm the worst person to ask about a motor at Darlington because the car usually is what I worry about, but uh, Definitely very peppy. Feels like it's got good bottom. Okay, that's what we're just getting some notes for over here. Usually they don't feel good to me on the bottom. More often than not, this one does. Okay. This was supposed to be a Richmond race motor, so we'll just make sure we have it back for there. like we could afford to be a, another hundred softer on that right front to me. Okay, I'll make a note. Thanks for the info. Have you uh, bottomed out anything yet? Negative. If you were looking for tires, I believe the 54 and the 99 are the two cars that are out right now. Thank you. the happiest dog in town. He belongs to Bobby Hamilton, who won the Craftsman Truck Race yesterday here at Darlington. Second race of the season. There's Bobby in Gatorade Victory Lane. And here are the Craftsman Truck Series standings brought to you by Sears. With Hamilton, the point standing leader after two of 25 races. I believe if I was going to bet, I'd put my money on uh, Bobby Hamilton because he's uh, got that Winston Cup experience, got a great team. You can see it all right there. 
All the truck races on Speed Channel. Well, on further review, let's have a look back and see where Jeff Burton first got that left rear fender damage. Coming down through here, and again, everybody's just running all over each other. 32 car dives to the outside, but to the inside. And he got into the left rear there. All right, right see, there. Burton was moving out to try to get a run on Mark. So Tony Stewart did not cause that damage and only got a tiny wrinkle above the tire on the right front yeah. of his Chevy. That's Burton slowing down right there, and Tony just had to dive under him. Jeff Burton's car has been towed to the garage with what we believe is an engine failure. And one week ago, same yeah. song, first verse. It has the same look as it did a year ago. Last a week, week ago we thought he saw, he hit the wall, but then later on we found out he did. So Roush Racing's engine woes continue. Here's a look over the last three weeks of what's happened. It also lost two engines in the Craftsman Truck Series race on Friday as well. So I'm, uh, boy, I'm, I'm, I know poor Jack has to be pulling his hair out. Of course, Jeff Burton came in here tonight and points he's going to take a big hit. And I think Steve is his crew chief, Paul Andrews. Thanks, Larry. Paul, what happened to the race car? Well, looks like we lost an engine. Uh, a, little, a little too bad. We had a really good car here today. Sitco 4 was awesome. Uh, Jeff was really going through the field. We had some lucky brakes on the pit stops, got some good track position, but our car was real strong. Any idea what's wrong with the motor? Uh, come out the bottom end. Uh, look, looked a little bit like Kurt's, a little bit like ours last week also. Engine troubles continue here in the Roush camp. They've waved off the restart. One lap will go back to green. 37 laps complete in the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. Here in Darlington, down, back down to pit road and map. Well, Mike, under caution, gives drivers a chance to catch their breath and crew members to kind of check over tires and, and look at their notes, but also gives owner Jim Smith, who is in his home in California, Washington race, to call his spotter, Eddie Thrapp, on top of the spotter stand. He called, and Eddie relayed the message. He said, the boss called, said, great job getting five extra bonus points for leading a lap, and he thanks you for not pitting under this caution and saving him 1500 bucks. <laughs> That's <laughs> cost of a set of tires. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you would think you could get more than about four or five laps out of a set of tires and costing that amount of money. But, you know, we we've talked about crew chief Tommy Baldwin. Remember, he has two wins here, but with Ward Burton in the 22 car. One of the most frustrating things as a car owner, and I know, is to take uh, tires home from here. You look at them, you say, well, gosh, they don't look like you hardly even used them. So we didn't. We didn't run them but two laps. But they wouldn't, we couldn't keep, we had to change. That's right. <laughs> Here's our uh, Singular Wireless Virtual Crew Chief question of the week. You can vote now from your Singular Wireless phone by sending the text message FOX to phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com to vote online. Remember last year, Sterling Marlin came from the back of the field to win this race. He's going to have to come from the garage today to win it because he got uh, a lot of problems down there. They're working on that car. I'm sure they'll get him back in the race, but uh, they're going to do a lot of repairs on the car. Getting set for the restart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the new leader, Jerry Nadeau, right there with Jimmy Spencer, John Andretti, and Jeff Green. Little different looking top five than we often see. We'll put Fox tracks in, and how about a little St. Patrick's Day crank it up on the restart? Sounds good to me. Let's go. Junior, the leader. Cars that made pit stops led by Jeff Gordon coming from the back of the pack once again. 
boy, it was almost a disaster again down this front straightaway here, Jeff. Oh, Tony Stewart's in the wall off of two. Straightens it up. I think that happened going down the front right here. Jeff Green put a big block on Tony. I don't know if they made contact or not, or if that was just getting up too high and getting in the loose stuff. And that's something you're going to probably hear us say about a two dozen times a day. Ooh, he's in the wall. But you, you know, you, you go into the wall here, you're not running so fast, and you scrape it. You don't really slam into it unless somebody gets into you. You get up there against it and you just kind of rub into it. And is that, Daryl, because they're running what at Daytona they call the Richard Petty groove, or he, you're so close to the wall to start with because that's where you run. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, now these cars are so fast here, Mike, you use up all the racetrack. You use all the track that there is available to you, and you get that close to the wall, you're going to rub into it pretty regularly. And I'm going to tell you, he hit that thing pretty hard, Daryl. That could have been ball joints, kicked the rear end over, been trailing arms. That was actually the second hit. He had hit it once before back in turn one. But, Larry, he's not lost position. He's still running right there in front of Casey Mears. Now, Daryl, how big a gamble is that? You know, to stay out and, and try to diagnose that race car after you bounced it off the wall. See no smoke. He's got the steering wheel in his hand. He can tell if he's got a tire rub or not. So the tires aren't smoking, and <laughs> you could just about run without a front end here because aerodynamics is not real, real important here. So it's more in his hands. They're going to be telling him, you make the call. I'm going to tell you what, how about that kid behind Tony Stewart throwing that 41 car, Casey Mears, only made two bush starts here. He tested here, and everybody in the garage area, when you talk about young drivers, everybody will point toward him and say, give him some time, he's going to be one to watch. But it's like Jeannie disclosed in the interview with Casey at the top of the show. He is used to running cars that are so much faster than these. What you always say, Daryl, you can slow down a guy who's used to running 240. It's hard to make a guy who runs 120 speed up. You can pull a chain, you can't push it. You're right. It'll wrinkle up. <laughs> That's it. But good for him. Good run for him today. Good run for John Andretti, who Mark Martin has just passed. Mark's got a pretty good looking car. I mean, he's been passing a lot of race cars. Backing up to here, next five, ten laps. Now that's got to be a crew chief who came in and got tires on that last caution versus one that didn't. Two seconds a lap, I mean two seconds at the end of a run is about what you'll lose. Boy, you look out the back of Dale Earnhardt Jr., you can't even hardly see that second place car back there. He's two and a half seconds in front of Jerry Nadeau. There's the interval. Right there, back to Nadu. A little further back, the Roush cars remaining. Mark Martin right there with Kurt Busch, now but, fourth and fifth. I'm telling you, Nadu running second after spinning out on the second or third lap of this race, right up in front of the whole field, and he's still out there going and in good shape. And of course, Kurt Busch qualified six, had to start at the rear of the field because of the engine change. So a lot of these guys are getting to the front from coming from the back. Mark Martin and Kurt Busch both have good looking cars right now. They're both handling really well. They're running good. I got to believe they're sitting there holding their breath though that nothing happens to them. And there John Andretti running in a solid sixth place. Dick Bergeron. Yeah and Andretti started in 26th place so he has passed 20 cars to get where he is. He's got a fast car but there's still more to be had. He called on the radio and told his crew that the car is mechanically tight and arrow loose. So theoretically they should be able to adjust it and get him still some more speed. To Steve Burns. Well, Dick Dale Earnhardt Jr. said at the beginning of his race, his number eight car was tight. Then he said it got freed up. Now he said it's snug, and I like snug. Every driver does, Steve. I mean, what you want is to be able to turn that wheel to the left and stay in that throttle. And if you can do that, you can run good anywhere. Just because you're tug on that steering. You're in control. You've got the car under control. It's not you're driving it. It's not driving you. Kurt Busch rockets past Spencer. And that'll change fourth place. Jeannie? Well, Tony Stewart actually had no complaints before he met the wall. Now it's actually not as bad as you might think. He has said several times on the radio that they'll have to work on the right front the next time they come through. He's saying the car is a little bit tight. It is not terrible, but he did hurt it a little bit, so they're going to have to solve this problem. You know, Mike, Larry, one of the things we always did coming to Darlington was we made our fender openings the absolute maximum size they could be. 
or in other words, the clearance around the tires. So if we got it into the wall, the fenders wouldn't get down into the tires. But, and didn't you also come here with a little extra structure in the right side of your car? We'd do a lot of things to the cars coming here. We'd always be sure that there was enough bracing in that right side to keep the sheet metal off of the tires. That's what you're really trying to do. Because you just know, I don't care who you are, how good you are, you're going to rub that wall here. You know, one of the things I mentioned is, you know, bending a ball joint. You have an upper and a lower ball joint. But Jeff Hammond and I last week talked to the move people that have the ball joints for these race teams. They've came up with a new ball joint. The ball joints we used to run with for production cars. They've come up now with actually a racing ball joint that's much more durable. They gotta have they gotta have a lot of really nice durable parts on the front of these cars now because we've seen last week Rusty Wallace hit the wall in Atlanta. Right. Came in, made some tie rod, made some uh, toe in adjustments, and he ended up finishing 12th or 13th. Tony's right there. He hadn't really given up that much after riding the wall the way he did. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> five seconds in front of Jerry Nadeau, and I asked Tony Urey, I said, "What car is this?" He said, "This is a car we ran at Rockingham." I said, "Does Dale Jr. know this car you ran at Rockingham?" He says, "We're not gonna tell him." No. But right now, see, when you're in the front like this, Larry, you can just drive off and leave everybody else because everybody else is racing each other. Like Ricky Rudd and our pole sitter Elliot Sadler are right now. This is for 14th place. And until he catches traffic, Dale Jr. is just sitting there riding. It's the easiest, this when your job is easiest at Darlington. You're out front all by yourself, no traffic. But when he catches the back of this field, Jerry Nadeau will catch him. Five and a half seconds back to Nadeau. Another two and a half back to Mark Martin, Kurt Busch, and Jimmy Spencer. Winston Cup Racing on Box presented by Michelin is brought to you by McDonald's and by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. Well, we've gone 60 laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr., your leader at Darlington Raceway. Welcome back. NASCAR Winston Cup Series on Fox presented by Michelin. And if you've just joined us, you've uh, missed a lot. We've got more action than an episode of The Shield. Let's take a look back and show you Jerry Nadeau as we watch the live action with Junior leading. This is Nadeau who was second at the time, spinning on the track. And then Matt Kenseth having some problems here with Jamie McMurray. Yeah, right there they were trying to basically get back to the caution and Jamie Murray got into Matt Kenseth. 
And then you see Kenzie, this is Italian. To, you know, hey, what are you doing? What's yeah. going on here to the crew of McMurray? And then Jack Sprague has problems uh, on his own. Yeah, green racetrack early on. He had a problem coming off the turn four right there. Randy goes, he continued also. Sterling Marlin and Jimmy Johnson. Looked like Sterling, who won this race last year, had some tire problems causing a seven car wreck. Yeah, they st started in turn four right off the floor. They got together. Sterling got down there in one and two, wound up wrecking, collecting six other cars in this wreck. I mean, it's been really, really interesting so far. The Atlanta winner, Bobby Labonte, having problems there. And then the Roush engine story, Jeff Burton, who had moved his way from back of the pack out of the race with the uh, engine problems. And uh, currently, though, Mark Martin and Kurt Busch are running third and fourth, chasing Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to live action. So at least some of the Roush engines are holding up so far. And there is Jeff Burton with the cat in the hat. Yeah, they're sitting right there with him. And uh, I'm sure he's not a very happy camper right now. He, neither one of them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the day plays out for the rest of the Roush cars. We had four cautions within the first 33 laps here, Jeff. And you talked about driving with patience and people hitting the wall, the most famous wall this side of uh, China. Have the drivers settled down a little bit here? It looks like they're starting to get into a routine here. This is one of those places you got to develop a rhythm early on. If not, it'll get you in trouble early. And Mark Martin making a move now as well, up to third currently. Well, Mark really likes this racetrack. He's closing down right now uh, on Jerry Nadeau, and uh, don't be surprised if Mark's not up there contending for the win before the end of the day. All right, let's go back upstairs, rejoin Mike Joy, Darrell Waltrip, and Larry McReynolds. Thanks, Chris. The only cars officially out of the race, Jeff Burton due to engine failure, and Todd Bodine, damage sustained in the lap 23 crash. Big movers, Dave Blaney has now joined the top 10, and Mark Martin now goes after Jerry Nadeau and moves his Ford into second place. It's such a frustrating place to race. Tony has been working, 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 trying to get around the uh, seven car here, and they can't. he can't make the pass, and look what it's done behind him. Cars bottled up everywhere. I know that's Mark Martin going there. But I'm going to tell you guys, we talked about this kid just a few laps ago, Casey Mears in this 41 car right here. He drove by Tony Stewart and Jimmy Spencer under green flag racing just a few laps ago. Nice and smooth, take care of your tires. That's good, buddy. Nice and smooth, hit all your marks, race the racetrack. You're doing good, man. These guys are backing up to you. Great advice from his spotter and from his crew chief, Jimmy Ellidge. Race the racetrack. Be patient. Take care of your tires. Things you have to do, Daryl, at this racetrack every single corner, every single lap. Well, he's in really good shape. He's gotten through the traffic. He's kind of in a, in a zone all by himself, and that's what you want here is a zone. You want to be all by yourself, nobody in front of you, nobody behind you. That way, if anything happens, you got time to react to it. Tony Stewart backing up there. You saw Dave Blaney go by, and outside pole sitter Ryan Newman is backing up. Steve? Yeah, Mike, he's dropped all the way down to 28th from the very start of this race. He's talked about how tight his race car is, describing it now as unbelievably tight. He says the front end is skating, and at one point he said the front end, the tires were chattering. Yeah, Steve, once again, he's in trouble right there with Ward Burton in the 22 car. Turn one. Coming to your outside. Caution is out. That group of cars right there have just kind of been all just Newman's yeah, been holding some of them up out. and come on, come they've on. been all around come him. On, now, turn, turn, and what's happening? They're trying to they're trying to stay on the lead lap. Come on, Ryan. It's Buddy Baker spotting for him. Larry Fort's gonna get his lap back. Looks like along with Brett Bodine and Kevin Harvick trying to get their lap back. Ward's just having a tough time even getting up to speed, though, it looks like to stay in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's going to make it around as Earnhardt brings the field slowly to the caution flag. Burton stays on the lead lap. Let's see what happened here in turn one. Ward just goes in down on the apron and you can't go into that corner with beside of someone. Somebody's got something's got to give before you get there. See, Ward was all the way down on the apron. What Ward's hoping was that, that Ryan would let off a little early and give Ward the, the room to slide up in front of him. If a guy doesn't, you just about wreck every time going in there like that. Remember what Dick Bergen said in the beginning. They told him at the NASCAR meeting this morning, you got to give, give, give. You can't take, take, take. Normally, you just, I mean, normally you know you can't race somebody into that corner. The guy on the outside is the guy that has to lift. From Kenny Wallace's point of view. contact and the spin. Picks are open. You mentioned Buddy Baker is Ryan Newman's spotter. 
Baker won the Southern 500 here in 1970 and won this spring race a year later. So good a lot of experience up there on the roof for Ryan Newman. Yeah he's been kind of Ryan's coach and uh, he's done a very good job with Ryan. Pit Road will be very very busy. I believe the only car that stayed out on the racetrack was the pace car. But he might have wanted to tell Ryan that uh, to let Ward go on right there. Dick Bergeron. Kurt Busch comes to a stop in his pit area. They are going to tighten it up a little bit, put a little round of wedge in the left rear corner of the car. Other than that, the car has been good to Steve Burns. No changes for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Phil Dry, the front tire changer. They call him the heat, getting the job done. No adjustments on the eight. The six car, Mark Martin, makes an air pressure adjustment. Let's go to Matt. An air pressure adjustment for Jerry Nady. No forward grip off the corner. They're also trying to pull a tear off off the windshield with a hook. I don't know if they got it. Did not look like it. He also made a track bar adjustment. We're working the fifth caution flag of the day in the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400 at famed Darlington Raceway, which has seen five different leaders, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Spencer, Paul Sitter, Elliott Sadler, Dale Jarrett, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now that equals or surpasses the number of cautions in 40 of the nearly 100 races they've had at this racetrack. The record for today's race, 15 caution flags, and the way they're running, it could be in jeopardy. I think it is, Mike. <laughs> Cheney? the time to make sure this toe is squared off and get it right I can get this car back to the front and that is exactly what they're going to do Tony made his first and stopped through the pits they worked on that right fender pulled it out and here he comes again and going to check the toe in Tony's already noticed improvement in the car in just the one lap that he made Matt Jeannie had a conversation this morning with Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief. We we're talking about at Atlanta where the NASCAR officials normally about halfway will tell teams they're allowed an extra man over the wall to service the windshield. Well, it's early in the race. Jerry Nadeau had a bad windshield. They're going to pull the tear off. NASCAR is not allowed teams to have the extra man, so they had a big hook with a uh, tie wrap around the windshield tear off to try to yank it off. They couldn't get it. Nadeau still has a very dirty windshield and is not happy. I mean, this place is terrible on windshields, sandblasts, oil, everything else. Uh, you have to get those tear-off offs. Our Fox Sports crew cam today is uh, being worn by Ohio native Steve Williams. He's the catch can man for Ricky Cravens. Tied Pontiac, the catch can catches the overflow from refueling off the vent. He's doing a whole bunch of jobs. There. Well, uh, the catch can man has become one of the busiest men on the pit stop. He puts the wedge wrench in. He holds a second can. He's got the catch can in there. A lot of things going on in that position right there. And that catch can serves two purposes, catching the excess fuel out to overflow. Also, there's a valve in there he has to open before that car will take the fuel that the gas man's dumping in. 70 laps. Robbie Gordon, the leader, he did not pit under this caution. So he's the race leader. Then Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads the race off pit road with Mark Martin and Jerry Nadeau. You're watching NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Michelin.
Five, ten, nine, twenty-one, forty-eight behind. Already gone by them once. We got jet dryers over in three. Be blowing all that debris down. Just watch your eyes. Welcome back to Darlington Raceway. We're under caution at 72 laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading Mark Martin. Jerry Nadu, Kirk Bush at full sitter, Elliot Sadler. Ford, if you haven't looked lately, look again. Look again at Matt Kenseth in victory lane at Las Vegas, helping him vault to the top of the Winston Cup point standings, where he leads Dale Earnhardt Jr., our race leader, by 74 points. And earlier today, Kenseth getting involved after Jerry Nadeau spun by himself. Kenseth drives down the racetrack, and Kenseth drives into Jamie McMurray. Both cars spin. But Matt Kenseth has come back, staying on the lead lap. He's back to 16th place, and the driver that initiated that caution, Jerry Nadeau, is third. What an up-and-down day at Darlington. Nadeau's doing a good job, though. He's been right up there at the front ever since the start of the race, even with the spin. So. Uh... Boy, I tell you what, one thing about this joint, though, Mike, you better come here with your work clothes on. Because yeah. it's a day's work right here, buddy. Driver, crew, the whole crowd. Because the crews are busy patching up the cars. The drivers are busy tearing them up. 100 miles of racing complete at Darlington. Now, coming back into the race, Tony Raines, Sterling Marlin, and Bobby Labonte are all back in the race after crash damage. Here's Steve Burns. Hey, Mike, just to follow up a bit on Mark Martin in that six car, they took some air out of both front tires and took a round of bite out of the left rear. So that's the update on Mark Martin's pit stop. And Steve, that tells me that car's getting tighter. It's not want to turn. They've softened the front spring rate by taking air out of the tires and took some wedge out. And we talked right before break, Robbie Gordon, he stayed out just to lead a lap, but now Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight car, he is leading the race. That group proved why they've won the McDonald's pit crew competition two weeks in a row. They beat everybody off pit road. From our aerial coverage provided by Budweiser, they come around the small end of the speedway, turns three and four, and look for the restart to begin lap 75. As long as we keep these cars, keep them bunched up the way that we have here with all these cautions, we're gonna keep on having people banging into each other. Like we talked about 100 miles in the books, uh, there's really only two cars officially out of the race, Jeff Burton, of course, with the engine failure, and Todd Bodine in the 54 car. Mark Martin with a little different line there in second place, Darrell, right around the bottom of the racetrack. That's the way we used to run this joint. I mean, that was turns one and two, and when your car was, it'd be a little tight on that turn there, what we what used to be one and two. When you got the car good on that end, then you go down here to turns three and four, you'd be a little bit loose. So this racetrack is very difficult. It's always a compromise to try to get where you can drive it on both ends. Joe Nemechek takes 10th place from Casey Mears. Here comes the four, that is Mike Skinner. And, and Mike, the reason that the, the turns down here three and four now are sweepers. You sweep through that corner. You get down here to turns one and two, you go up into that turn, you cut. You cut twice to get through that turn. Wants to get in, wants to get off. And it really is a two different turns totally. Jeff Green drops to the bottom on Skinner. Makes the pass. I tell you, he's been strong pretty much all day long. Started back in 32nd position. We watched him yesterday in practice. He was pretty good on those long runs. And like a lot like Jerry Nay do, those guys need a good finish. First four races have not finished better than 25th. Well, Green, uh, Green's run uh, one here in his uh, Bush car last year, I believe it was. So he, he gets around here pretty well. Jeff Green in 12th. There's Matt Kenseth. 
still moving back up toward the front. He's at 14th place. Mike Skinner in that four car. He looks like he's on the move pretty good. His old car is turning good on the exit of the corner because everybody has fresh tires right now. It's 15 laps in the run. That's when you see the good cars prevail. Wow, log jam right here. Oh, Mayfield got a little tap from Stewart. This is back from about 20th on back. There's a lot of room for your car for you to go, a lot of places you can go, but there's a lot of no place to crawl a stick except right up in that groove. Darrell, I'm amazed though. These guys are not bashful about getting all the way down on the apron, getting into turn one. That's what shoots these race cars up the racetrack. Well, that's this is a classic slide job. You drive that thing down underneath of them, and the guy on the outside better let you in, or you're gonna wreck both cars. That's what this joint's always been about, though. It's it's about anticipating where you're going to catch a guy, not only the guy that's making the pass, but the guy that's being passed. And you got to let off on the straightaway and let that guy on the inside go, or you'll wreck. Now watch Tony Stewart's orange Chevrolet, Home Depot Chevy, right here. Now he's slow, you know he's got a little bit of a run. The 19 car gets loose. I mean, it, it, you know, if he'd have been carrying any more speed, he'd have been in the back of uh, Mayfield's car and have been a wreck. Looks like twice on one on one straightaway. Dale Earnhardt Jr. a second and a half up on Mark Martin. Jerry Nadeau is third. Kurt Busch is fourth. Pole sitter Elliot Sadler running in fifth, just ahead of Dave Blaney. This is this place you don't do anything for the first 300 miles except stay out of trouble. Keep the fenders on the car, stay out of trouble, don't get in the wall, don't get run over, then you go racing the last 100 miles. Let's go to the pole sitters. Pitt, here's Matt. Let's check in with his crew team, Raymond Fox at third. What shall you say about the race car now, Raymond? Uh, he was he was playing about being a little bit free there at the start of the race and on that second run there. Uh, we've tightened him up a little bit. He's he's pretty happy. He's, uh, well, I think where we're really going to be good is in the long run, and uh, you know, we just want to put on a good show for M and M's and uh, Elliot and all these guys and show what we can do. You heard Elliot Sadler say in our pre-race, he felt like his car was the strongest on the long runs. To Genie's Alaska. Well, Dave Blaney is real happy. He has passed 25 cars, but he's even more happy with his own vehicle. Crew chief Robert Booty Barker nailed the setup so far. No complaints from Blaney, no adjustments, just new tires when he comes in on his pit stops. Dick? John Edge. John Andretti went from 6th to 10th on that last round of pit stops. They decided to tighten up the car, and the decision as to how to do that was made by no less than Richard Petty. It clearly worked. He's picked up another spot. Andretti now running in ninth spot. Well, we've not yet had one of those long runs that some of the drivers are looking for. The longest green flag run we've had has been right at 30 laps. And these things do get ill about 50 laps into a run. But I tell you, I've been watching uh, Larry started way, way in the back, but he's just nipping his way to the front. Is this cat right here? Things are looking up for him. Yeah, and again, this is the same car that we heard our guys earlier talk about. He had it rocking him. A lot of teams, even Elliot Sadler, talked to Raymond Fox my, this morning myself. Same setup that works at Rockingham will be pretty tunable for this place. Always ran my, this was always, a, I ran the Bristol setup here. But as my brother always told me, I'm old school. Jerry Nadeau. Running in third, does he have a tire rub on the right front? Seeing a little bit of smoke. Looks trickling. like a little haze over there. He could have brought. Yeah, there it he is. Does. Yeah, there big it. time. Matt. And that's exactly what he asked on the radio, and his team told him that the right front tire was rubbing. And, and uh, that that would really, really that's that's a serious rub. I, I don't think I'd sit out there very long with that. I'm not sure that he got into anybody. I never, it doesn't appear to have a lot of damage. It, that might be minor damage, but he can't stay out there with that tire rubbing like that. It tires coming outside. That's what they said. They said no oil was on their windshield. One outside. That was they checked with one of the cars that was behind Nader. Yeah. Was it oil no, smoke? I, they I, said I, no. I don't see any damage on the car whatsoever. No, no damage. So yeah, we've been told that NASCAR is going to put the black flag out for him, so he's going to have to come to pit road. That's going to cost him probably close to two laps. And what a shame. I mean, he's off to the start he had there. He spun out, and he recovered, and he's running in the top two or three. Guys, I don't think it's tired. Hmm. 
I don't, I don't think it is either. Now, I, I did it initially, but uh, it's got to be an oil leak. I mean, this is the kind of luck these guys have had all year oil long. pressure, water's 200, oil's 230. Um, I'm smoking like hell now. Yeah, that's not a tire rub now. It's coming out of both fenders. Yeah, Jerry Nate, if you look at the back of that car, a lot of smoke behind well, loose it. Loose fitting or something. That's what it seems like. You got good oil pressure. Or stay back. Gas guys, stay back. Stay back, gas guys. Two, one. Matt? Well, Mike, you can see Ryan Pepperd in the crew chief unhooking the hood. He's going to raise the hood. Jerry Navy said one thing. It might actually be maybe a loose oil line or something. It kind of smells like oil. Ryan is barking out orders. They're going to try to diagnose what's wrong here with the L1. A tough break for Navy. Had a great day going. You can see the crew still looking around underneath, trying to dissect what's wrong. And he shut it off. There's oil all over. The outer edge of the tires, it took the, one of the tires off here. You can see there's oil everywhere. Underneath the hood, it's on the hood. Well, that's a heartbreaker for Jerry Nadu. It's one thing when, when that happens and you're running in the back, but when you're running up there in the top three, gosh, that's tough. And to overcome what they had overcome by spinning out there right. at the first part of the race and getting back up to third position. And plus, I, I think it's good for the Pontiac teams because I think they were probably the, the weaker of the, all the manufacturers, and to have a car running that well was good for them today. Matt Kenseth, leader of the NASCAR top 10. You see him closing up on Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's just gone into ninth place. And we talked about overcoming deficit. Just remember, he had spun out early in the race, was way back almost dead last. Now he's up tonight, just went by John Andretti. There, let's have a look at Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s line around this racetrack. He's just looking for a place where there might be a little grip. <laughs> That's all it is, is a little grip. But when your car is handling like that car appears to be handling, you can run it where you want to. Because it, it won't ever, it, it won't do anything you don't expect it to. And that's what happens to you here. You drive off in the corner, things not handling real good. Now, coming off a of four, that is right out against the wall right there. But you look at it, look at his hands, Mike. See his hands? He's not fighting with that car. Watch this. He goes down here, he eases it into the corner. I mean, that is a beautiful hand and all, handling automobile here at Darlington. The thing about running it where it wants to, it's easy on the tires as well. And you can hear him working the throttle. You don't just mat it here. You got to work the throttle. The car's got to handle good. And you got to be able to ease into that throttle. It looked like he took his left hand and reached out in front of the window net for a little air. Hey, it might be wanting to stay cool. <laughs> Look good, you know. But if there is a racetrack where you drive it as much with that throttle, that steering wheel, it's with the throttle pedal. It's here at Darlington. All right, folks, we're going to help you out. Here's the not-so-secret number in our Be a Grand Marshal for a Day contest. Just log on to NASCAR.com or FoxSports.com on Lycos and enter for your chance to win. If you win, you'll start the race riding the pace car, wave the checkered flag, and be a network executive at the Winston Cup Race at Rockingham next year. For more details, log on to FoxSports.com or NASCAR.com. Clear either side. Inside, the stand inside. Clear low.
NASCAR on Fox presented by Michelin is brought to you by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR, delivers a chance to win four tickets to the Daytona 500. Log on to foxsports.com, keyword UPS Racing. Jerry Nadeau back on track, eight laps down, but uh, the report is he may be leaking fluid. They're going to bring him back in. And let's go to Matt. Well, a great race car prepared by Ryan Pemberton. A heartbreak, Ryan. What's wrong with the car? Uh, we, we broke the oil pressure uh, fitting. Uh, in the back of the back of the heads there, uh, we lost a lot of oil. Uh, it's a shame. Jerry's been doing a great job. The team's doing a great job. We really feel like we're getting things together here. Um, it shows like it on the racetrack, qualified third, and uh, we're running third. So we feel really good about everything. And it's just a shame the U.S. Army car was doing great. Uh, the team's really come together. It's just a shame. I had that happen at Charlotte uh, three or four years ago. Normally you would run a steel fitting right there. It goes into the, out of the back of the motor through the firewall to the gauge. Some time ago, I messed around and put an aluminum fitting right there, and that line sits there and vibrates and breaks that fitting right off. Well, Darrell, what NASCAR has now decided is uh, they NATO's come around a couple of times, and they believe what may have been leaking was what was spilled from yeah. the earlier leak, and that now that's burned off, and they're going to leave Jerry out yeah, on track. Yeah, he probably had a little residual oil laying around on top of the motor there. And what's frustrating about that fitting, that's not a fitting for performance. It's no, just it's for the not. driver to be able to read the oil pressure. Makes you wonder, why would we run an oil pressure game? Yeah, and, you, and trust me, if that's what happened, you'll go home and you'll kick yourself all weekend, all week long. All right, begs the question, why not an electric gauge? Why run a gauge where you've got to run an extra line to the gauge? Why not use an electric sender? I, I, I don't think that'd be very, uh, on these engines, I mean, they're, they're dry sump engines, and if the oil pressure, there's only a couple of gauges you really need to be really accurate on, and the oil pressure is one of them. Okay. So I wouldn't want to take a chance on some kind of electrical problem messing up my oil pressure gauge. Here's our pole sitter, Elliot Sadler, in the Robert Yates number 38 Ford, Jeff Gordon, third and fourth. And quite honestly, if you look at these cars today, the gauges in them are, today are just about what, like what was in them 10, 15, 20 years ago. Haven't changed all that much. One of the few things I can say that about. Right. Here's Kurt. Bo they're lighter. The gauges are lighter. We know that. Here's uh, Kurt Busch, who was running in fifth place. Let's listen here. Get our kind of race cars back, Jimmy. This is not right. If we put a wedge in and we're free or off, we've got to put something in the right front to help us block it over over there. All right. And what he's saying there, Daryl, is they, they must have been a little bit loose. They put wedge in it, which is supposed to tighten the car up, but it made the car looser, which is not unusual about this racetrack. So what he's saying, get that wedge back out. What's making me loose is my car is laying down on the right front, then it's getting loose. Yeah, he's got too much wedge in the car, and it's actually like riding on three wheels. And I think Jeff Hammond can show us that the Ford cutaway car, exactly what he's kind of describing there a little bit. We're going to drive here, Larry. What's going on right now with Kirk Bush? If you'll look, He's talking about the right front. It's going over. His car's rolling over too much for him. He doesn't like that feel, and that's making him loose. They've already tried to tighten up with wedge. So what he wants Jimmy Fennick to do is on that next time they come under, uh, I call it a caution, is to put a rubber in the right front. What they'll do is come in and take the right front power off and stick a rubber right here in his right front screen, just like this. Slam her up in there. What that will do, it will make the right front screen thinking it's and it's stiffer, they'll be able to make another chassis adjustment to go along with this rubber in the right front, keep the car from rolling over, and make it more comfortable for Kurt Busch so he can get back up there and challenge for a win. Yeah, they put, if they put about a half a rubber like Jeff had in his hand there, that'll stiffen that spring about 100, 150 pounds. You can't start the race with a rubber in your front spring, but you can add one as an adjustment on a pit stop during the race. 106 laps complete. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s lead, 2.8 seconds on Mark Martin. But what I liked about that was Kurt Busch, young kid. Doesn't he have a lot of experience on any of these racetracks, but he knows what he wants that race car to do. And he's telling Jimmy, and that's what crew chief Larry knows, and Jeff, he wants the crew chief, give me some feedback. Tell me what you need. Tell me what we can do to make the car better. And that was a great call on his part. And that's what Jimmy Finney has told me about Kurt Busch. He never quits thinking about, A, what his race car's doing, what it might need to fix it, or what he can do to make the car better himself. Right. Now here's Dave Blaney. 
Blaney's been in the top 10 all day, flirted with the top five, and he's presently in seventh place. Jeannie? And it has been a great day for the 77 car. Robert Booty Barker getting no requests from his driver, you guess, absolutely perfect, I guess, on this setup. No. Um, if we were perfect, we'd be late. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no, he's pretty good. Um, he's a little loose off right now, but I just told him to ride. Just don't wreck. You know, we got, what, 185 to go, and Charlington can fight you anytime. So we're just chilling. So far, so good, guys. You know, Mike, Larry, Jeff, a guy I wanted to pick, but I kept watching him practice. He started way back in the field, and I thought, that they may be not going to have that great a weekend, but I should have known better. Dale Jarrett in that 88 car is slowly working his way up through this field, and he's up to 11th place right now. And uh, that car really looks good. He's picking them off one at a time. I think we're going to hear a lot about Dale Jarrett before the day's over. The first race we did here on Fox 2001, Dale whipped up on him pretty bad here two years ago. And I think he's doing the same thing he did two years ago. He's good. He don't run that fast lap, but he's good on those long runs. And something we need to mention, this is Dale Jarrett's 500th career start, Winston Cup start here today. Guys talking about Dale Jarrett, what I found to be interesting, I think they've talked about it a couple times, Jimmy Zelasko documented that they were able to use the notes off of uh, Elliott Sadler's car. They actually even changed the front spindles, Larry, because the feel in Dale's car was not quite like he wanted, and he relied a lot on what Elliott said about his race car, thought maybe it was just a little bit better. So they made those changes, which are pretty big when you come to a racetrack to change front spindles to get your car driving right. Uh, uh, Jeff, you wouldn't let me change my pick, would you? Uh, Daryl? No. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Speaking of picks, Sterling Marlin, the defending champion of this race, for at least the second, make that the third time today, has just pulled his Dodge to the garage. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads at 111 laps by 1.6 seconds over Mark Martin.
new leader at 117 laps. Mark Martin out in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And, and Mike, I, what I was saying earlier, you come up to the back of the field, I don't care how big a lead you got, you don't just blow by these people when you get on old tires. Dale Jr. runs up on a slow, on a lap car, a car's getting ready to lap, and Mark had a run off turn two. Now one reason the Mark passing. may have been, may have so easily taken the lead from Jr. was a conversation that Jr. had with his crew a few minutes ago. How many laps left on this lead? About 32. That's too many. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 31 too many, right? He can, you know? he can already tell that's way too many. I need tires now. And there you see to the next pit stop on Junior, 15 laps, and that's not for fuel, that's for tires. But what happens here in these long green runs is if some of the leaders start coming to pit road, it don't matter what lap you're on, you can't be far behind them because you're going to give up so much time to them with them on fresh tires. And folks, the way you can see that is that with the difficulty that they're having lapping other cars. Yeah, it's just so hard. To, you know, the tires are worn out now, and you just don't have the you don't have the maneuverability that you need to work your way around people. That's what happened to Junior. Dave Blaney just got around Kurt Busch. That was for sixth place. Joe Nemechek has moved up now into the top five. Yeah, Nemechek just got by Blaney just a lap or two ago. Uh, but Blaney's having a great day, and uh, so is Joe Nemechek. But, you know, we talked about comparing this place to Rockingham. Blaney had a great run at Rockingham a few weeks ago. This place is very similar. That's the same car that he ran at Rockingham. Rockingham here and Bristol are, are very, very similar on tires and setup and everything else. Tony Raines, who was involved in the lap 23 crash, has taken his car back to the garage. Uh, joining Sterling Marlin, Jeff Burton, Jack Sprague, and Todd Bodine. Talk about cars coming to pit road. Ryan Newman in the 12 car, he's on pit road. And this is probably a routine stop. He's doing that short pitting. He's gonna get advantage of those fresh tires. Hope it cycles through. He don't wanna get caught by a caution flag. He'll make up that much time on the leaders. What happens here though, is when cars start to make their pit stops, now you got cars out there that are two seconds faster than the cars they're running against. And the closing rate is so fast, sometimes you have an accident here because the guy with the new tires runs up on a slow car and they get together. What do you know, Matt? Well, Darrell, that's the exact concern Tommy Baldwin Jr. has for his driver, Jimmy Spencer. In fact, he told Spider Eddie Thrapp, start telling me when guys start peeling off the pit, we don't want to get stuck out there and lose too much track position on these older tires. Thanks, Matt. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack has been Michael Waltrip. He went past Dale Jarrett, past Ricky Craven, and you just saw him pass Jimmy Spencer. That moves Michael into the top ten. Yeah, it's almost like he's been saving his tires, maybe a little bit more than some of the other guys have, because he just all of a sudden started going by these guys. Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he'd been in the top 15. He's on pit road, along with Ward Burton, who just went a lap down. And Michael did come here and test a couple of weeks ago and said he loved his car in race trim. That is a backup car, though. He wrecked his primary car yesterday in practice. Now Mark Martin struggling to put Robbie Gordon down a lap. See, the, 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 he doesn't want to go a lap down, and he's not going to give in to Mark. And you can hold the leader up here so badly. Robbie's having a Dave Marcus kind of race. Stayed out on the caution to lead a lap, pick up five bonus points, and now he is fighting like crazy to stay on the lead lap. As long as he wants to hold him up, I think he can because it's just difficult. Mark will really have to be careful because he's the leader of the race. You don't want to take get wrecked by somebody that can't beat you. See if it works this time. And while these guys are fighting, Robbie Gordon, Jeff Gordon, who's in third place, he's Thanks catching them. Let's go to Steve Burns. Well, Larry Mack, expect Mark Martin to pit on about lap 134. Mark says he wants just a little more grip out of his race cars. So they're going to take a little more air pressure, about a half pound out of both front tires. He said his car is neither loose nor tight. He just wants a little more grip. Steve, he's getting to that point where he's happy with his car. You don't want to over just like Daryl and I talked about a while ago. And it, people may say a half a pound air, but with this radial tire, remember the, the radial tire is like a spring. So that's like taking about 10 or 15 pounds of spring rate out of those front springs, a half a pound of air pressure. Plus you do it a little wee bit at a time. You want to slip up on it. You don't want to make any great big adjustments because you don't want to get the car upset. Johnny Benson pits, Mark Martin, or rather Mark Martin leads, and Jeff Gordon closes the gap on second place Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mark Martin racing with the with the 31 car it cost him a second a lap until he got around him. 
And Darrell, now we get to a point in the race on green flag pit stops, which appears, to me it appears treacherous, because you have cars that were slow, now on brand new tires, racing cars on the lead lap that were fast, and now are on worn tires and have backed up. You catch a guy, you just catch people in places where they have nowhere to go, and neither do you, and you run over each other. And Robbie Gordon, who just went that lap down in the 31, he comes to pit road along with Jimmy Spencer uh, in the seven car, and Bobby Labonte, of course, who's many laps down. And I tell you, this is one of the most treacherous pit roads to get onto under green. Ooh, it baby. sneaks up on you. You have to get on the apron, and that apron is very slick. Yeah, a lot of sand, dirt, grit down there, and you get it on those hot tires. And Jimmy Johnson, is a, he's, his car is way off. He's been struggling the last several laps. I've watched him. He's lost lots of positions, and now he goes a lap down. Matt? Well, a scheduled stop for Jimmy Spencer. Lap 128, just like Tommy Baldwin told Spencer a little while ago on the radio, they already made a chassis adjustment coming around to the left side. We have a lead change on second place. Change for second place, 24 car. Service complete for Spencer. Green flag pit stops. First time we've seen this today. First long green flag run of the afternoon. Now he Kurt, right Kurt Busch, he almost, he missed pit road. There, we just talked about it. The 97 car, he completely missed pit road. It yep. sneaks up on you. Got to go around again. You get down in, and you get that sand and grit on your tires, the, t the car won't turn. And he has it on there now by being down there, and he can't even hardly get back up to speed. This is going to cost him a lot of time. Now, watch him right here to turn three and four. There's the entrance to pit road right there. And it's, it, as you can see, it's right in the middle of turn four. And there he comes. Oh, yeah, can't make way, it, can't make it. Way, way too fast. He completely missed it. Yeah. I mean, you have to remind your driver, you're trying to do all you can. It's a green flag pit stop. You have to remind him on the front stretch. You have to remind him again on the back stretch about the entrance to pit road. And now he comes in extra slow, <laughs> yeah, holds gonna... up Casey Mears and Rusty Wallace, <laughs> almost run right over him. Yeah, he's not going to mess up this time. I'm going to mess up once. Joe Nemechek working on Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is now for third place. Remember, Jeff Gordon's gone past for second. And don't forget that Joe Nemechek's crew chief almost won this race a couple of times with uh, with Mayfield here in the 12 car. Dick Bergeron. Well, Kirk Busch has got a whole bunch of things that they want to try to do to this car on this pit stop. They're changing the wedge on it, changing tire pressure. They also had to pull the tear off off the windshield. He was having a hard time seeing. They did not, however, put that rubber in the right front spring. See the point leader, Matt Kenseth in. Casey Mears completing his stop, going out. Mark Martin in the six car. Tony Stewart in the 20 car. Jimmy Johnson, who just went a lap down. He's on pit road along with Elliott Sadler, Dave Blaney. This is the deal. It's a domino effect. Once a few cars start to pit, you can't be far behind them. Dale Jarrett, the 88 car. He comes to pit road as well. Steve Burns. Mark Martin will have to get in just ahead of the 23 of Kenny Wallace. Slides into his pits to the right of the pit, but he's safely inside. Todd Ziegler changing the front tires. Chris Ladick on the rear tires. The Jack Man, Chris Webb, Rich Mashinsky, the Gas Man. No adjustment, just a little air pressure out of the front tires for Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon's on pit road in the 24 car. Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's finally on the pit road. Jeff Gordon has now led 18 of his 21 Winston Cup starts at Darlington. He's had six victories here. Yeah, Nemechek's the leader right now. Boy, all these guys that have made pit stops, they are just going by him left and right, left and right. He couldn't get in the pit if he wanted to, Steve. Well, D.W. Dale Jr. says his car's gotten just a little bit loose. They're going to change four tires, half a pound of air in the right front. Matt Yoke. Steve Latard already makes a wedge adjustment on Jeff Gordon's car. He sits back on lap 104. The car was starting to go loose. Lap 125, really loose. Service complete to Steve Burns. Well, Matt Dale Earnhardt Jr. discussed not making any changes at all, but again, a half a pound in the right front tire, that number eight car. Boy, our leader is just giving up. Joe Nemechek's leader, he's giving up so much right now. He's finally coming to pit road now, Darrell. I mean, yeah, that, he couldn't run any further. But Peter Suspenzo almost won the race here a couple of times with Jeremy Mayfield when they were in the 12 car. That's Joe's crew chief, so he knows how to set a car up for this joint. Doesn't surprise me to see that 25 car running up front like that. Nemechek gets an extra two or three laps from uh, that set of tires. Yeah, his car didn't look bad. It wasn't like it was handling bad. It was just slow. And like I say, he couldn't get out of the way fast he, enough. I think he wanted to get in the pits for two laps and couldn't get down. Well, let's keep track. His last lap on the old tires, 
was 33.58 seconds. We'll have a look at how he runs with new tires once he gets back up to speed. Elliot Sadler back up to fifth place, Matt. Mike, as the pit stops continue to cycle out here, Elliot Sadler has climbed himself back into the top five. He pitted back on lap 133. He's been loose and tight back and forth all day. He was a tick free on that last run. They made an air pressure adjustment and also a wedge adjustment on the pole sitter. So the pole sitter is fifth. Our point leader, Matt Kenseth, is fourth. Jeff Gordon is third. Mark Martin has now reassumed the lead in the Pfizer Viagra Ford at 136 laps. But Mike, you just mentioned him. I'm telling you, this guy right here, what a roller coaster day. Good pit stop like normal. And he's actually going to be running third now that all the pit stops has cycled under green. Yeah, he's our point leader. And, you know, if he keeps doing it, this is what you have to do to win championships. Have trouble, overcome them. Mark Martin out in front at Darlington after 136 laps. One flat, leader run 3080. You're okay, man. It'll come to you. on the leaders on your stop. Nice job. to come racing on Fox presented by Michelin is brought to you by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. By Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. By Net Zero, internet access. And by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Mark Martin leads. Here's why Jeff Gordon's up to second place. A sub 14 second stop. See that just uh, as we taped it during that round of green flag pit stops a few minutes ago. New to Winston Cup this season, the McDonald's drive through challenge, powered by, fueled by Powerade. All pit stops are timed, and the participating crew with the shortest cumulative time gets 20 grand, and the season long winner, $200,000. There are the standings. Not bad money. Not at all. Gordon is second, two seconds behind race leader Mark Martin. But he is closing at a high rate of speed, Mike. Same old deal. Mark's up here, people trying to stay on the lead lap. The one car got lapped and got back around him because of uh, the old one car was holding Mark up. So Mark's got his hands full trying to get through these lap cars. 
And of course, these lap cars like Steve Park, it's their job to do everything they can to stay on the lead lap should they catch a caution. Of course. Mark Martin trying to battle Steve Park. Well, what's the goal? The 31 car was really giving Mark a hard time. Mark come off at four there, lost his momentum. Steve come off with a hit of steam, and around him he went. And Gordon's back there nipping away. He's loving every minute of this. Because once the leader gets by you, you know, you're a little more forgiving. You'll let the guy running second go because you've lost your opportunity to get your lap back. And no fault to Steve Park. That's his job. Take it. He sees the situation. Take advantage. Get going. Get gone. Now, what about Jimmy Spencer? Spencer was up in the top five when pit stops came and whoops back bumper gets kind of skinned up there. Mongo no like wall. <laughs> Mongo was all drawn up. And they, they just need to hope that bumper cover stays in place there and don't start dragging because he's sitting there right now running in ninth position. Mongo. And he stopped early Daryl was that a, could that have been new uh, tires yeah. versus old tires new tires old tires I'd say. Jeff Gordon now 3.9 yeah. seconds behind same, Mark Martin. Same thing happened to uh, Jeff that happened to Mark. He, he had to go through that same pack of traffic. They held him up a little while. Mark, he still hadn't gotten around the, uh, the one car up here, though. He's still working on him pretty good. There you see on the Fox tracks, he's three and three quarters seconds behind leader Mark Martin right now. And it's pretty much holding all the way around the racetrack in there. Their lap times are fairly close to each other. And if you're planning your sandwich stops at home, we are halfway. The Carolina Dodge Dealers 400 at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Mark Martin, one of eight different or nine different leaders today. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Cole Cinderelli at Sadler, Dale Jarrett, Jimmy Spencer, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Robbie Gordon, and Mark have led this race. Last time through here now, Mark was alongside the one car as they came off turn two, couldn't make the pass, had to back off, Park went on, lost all that game, all that ground he gained. And here comes Gordon. You see him right here coming up on the back of the, of the bumper of the six car. And I got to tell you, little brother is not doing too bad today, boys. Yeah, and I mean, remember, he had to start this race in a car that was unpracticed because of crashing yesterday in happy hour, the final practice, and he's moved up to the ninth position. That's not bad from the back in he's, a backup car. He seems to be good on those long runs. Well, he tested here, and he told me, he said, DW, I love my car. He said, it's the most awesome car I've ever had at Darlington. Jimmy Spencer, after that contact with Mike Skinner, now Spencer is in the 10th position. And still that bumper cover, not apparently a danger, just a little bit broken up there. Mongo's wagging his tail. Matt? Mike, the Darlington stripe on the right side was hard enough, though, to give Spencer some concern about a possible tire rub, but they had Eddie throughout the spotter take a look at it several times by. He radioed back to Spencer, said it looks good. Doesn't look like the tire's rubbing, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, Matt, we've been watching it on our monitor as well, and we've seen no smoke whatsoever, so I think he's in good shape. Yeah, he did tag the wall pretty hard after contact uh, with the nose of Mike Skinner's Pontiac. Just past the halfway point, Mark Martin leading in Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Michelin.
55. Next best car is a 65. Right. Leader of 3208. Nice job. Fox welcomes you back to Darlington, South Carolina. This is a visa race break with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel, more than halfway through this race, and Mark Martin, currently your leader. And what a difference a week or a couple of weeks make. He, of course, with Roush Racing, and they've been taking their hits for engine problems. And we saw even earlier today with Jeff Burton, who has had a lot of success here at Darlington, having some problems and falling out of the race. That's right, right here. The 99 car, he loses an engine right there early on, early on, like lap 32. But, you know, along comes John, and it happens to be Mark Martin on 117. He actually takes the lead away from Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. And Mark is looking very strong right there. And a man who's got a kind of serious look on his face is Jack Roush. Right so some members of your team can have problems. Mark Martin was second to last in Atlanta. He did finish last in Las Vegas, but he is currently leading this race. Can he hold on? And if you look at the top 15 drivers right now, there are four, including Mark Martin, of Roush drivers. Well, I guarantee right now there's only one thing you can do right now is run it as hard as you can to try to stay out there in the front, and he's a great one right now for doing that. And uh, here's another guy right now who led early on, and that's Joe Nemechek. But to show you the difference in tires here at Darlington, on old tires just before Nemechek pitted, he was running like 3350. He came in, put on new tires, came back out. He ran 3076. That is 13 miles an hour's difference between old tires and new tires. That's the reason why Daryl and all these guys keep talking about the rate of closure with guys with new tires versus old ones, how much trouble you can get in, and how important it is to make sure you get in and out of the pit road right kind of sequence, otherwise you can lose a lot of ground. Speaking of uh, pit road, let's go down and check and get more on the 25 car. Joe Nemechek check with Genie's Alaska. And he's also a guy that has a pretty good race set up today. Just one track bar adjustment early on, and it has been a nice Sunday ride for Nemechek. He's saying now the car is a little tight for right now, but word from his spotter and his crew chief, look, the car looks good. Everything looks beautiful. Mike? Jeannie, I'll tell you who's coming right behind Joe Nemechek, and that is Dave Blaney in Man. seventh place, but he's been closing fast on Nemechek. Larry, I tell you, Booty Barker's just got to be beside himself. To go in there and take that team over, come from the Bush Series the way he did, steps into this operation here and man has he made a difference i mean he and it was a tough decision i mean he left the bush not only did he leave a bush team he left a championship caliber bush team bill davis and scott Wimmer. booty said i wanted to be a winston cup crew chief by age 30. he says i'm 31 so i got some lost time to make up for it <laughs> he's making up for it in a hurry I tell you, talk about Dave Blaney, another car right there. That yellow car, Mike Skinner, I mean, he's been coming too. He's up to eighth position after starting back in 23rd. This race team, Mike Skinner, Larry McClure, the whole group, they need a good run. They only had one top 10 finish last year. It'd be great to see them close the deal here with a top 10 finish. Skinner presently eighth, running eight seconds off the lead. And right off uh, the bumper of Jimmy Johnson, who's one down. Now, Jimmy Spencer has now dropped a spot to Dale Jarrett. That puts him back to 13th place, Matt. 
Mikey is fading and fading fast. Spencer reports to Crucci Tommy Baldwin that we've lost the handle of the race car. Tommy told Spencer he thinks what they probably did was knock the toe out when he hit the wall. In fact, Tommy said he hit the wall pretty darn hard. We actually saw it on TV. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that he has a lot more damage than it appears to have, and that's what's affecting the car. Jeff Green right behind him. I put Jeff Green in a class with Dave Blaney as perhaps the two most underrated drivers in the Winston Cup garage. A lot of talent there, too. Of course, Jeff Green's crew chief now, Mike Bean, had some good runs here last year with Ricky Craven in the 32 car. And as I said earlier, they were very fast in both the final practice sessions yesterday. Dave Blaney has caught Matt Kenseth, who's backing up. Joe Nemechek just passed Kenseth a lap ago for fifth, and Blaney trying to take sixth there. Sometime, you know, we just had a, a round of, of uh, pit stops. Sometime you make the wrong adjustment, you go the wrong way, as we heard Kurt Busch talking to Jimmy Finney earlier, and you just start backing up, and you can't wait for that next uh, round of stops to get it put back like it was. Dick Bergeron is in the point leader's pit. Well, Matt Kenseth has been dropping back. He has gone back from third to sixth, Mike. The problem with the car is that it's just a bit tight. He's having trouble picking up the throttle. When he picks up the throttle, the nose pushes out. But they are almost 30 laps away from their scheduled pit stop. Saw crew chief and former Bush Series driver Robbie Reiser there. Back up front, Mark Martin with a 2.8 second lead on Jeff Gordon. Well, you don't want to be loose here because if you're loose here, you're going to wreck. But what happens so you get over you go over the edge there, Larry with getting the car too tight then it won't turn you won't wreck but you won't go anywhere well that's the reason Mark Martin we talked about it earlier they've just been making small adjustments because we know now this racetrack is getting plenty of rubber on it and that's going to tighten the race car up as well it's a momentum racetrack you've got to be able to use the throttle as much as possible to keep your momentum up when the car's tight pushing you got to be lifting out of the throttle a lot you just don't go anywhere and what about the driver who led most of the last green flag run, Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Steve? Mike, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is describing his race car as tight. Tony Urey Jr. said that's because the spring rate on these tires is different. That's why you feel tight. And we can look in the car there. You see his hands going down the straightaway here. He's going down into turn three. See him get an extra, see him get that other that right hand over there and get that other hitch. Really having to turn that thing to the left coming off the corner, and you can hear he's not backing the gas. Now, what makes the spring rate on this set of tires different? Air pressure? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, Steve, Mike, Darrell, what happens when you get these tires from the tire company, they actually have rated this tire. I talked earlier about the tire being a spring, and they actually have the rate wrote on them. You work very hard to get matched set of tires where it don't differ, but you heard Matt Yoakum talking at the beginning of the race, how many sets of tires these teams go through. It's almost impossible to get every set the same. Elliot Sadler is close right up here on the back of Jeff Gordon. Jeff got in a little bit of traffic, and uh, that's for a battle for second place right there. So our pole setter's having a pretty doggone good day. He finished second in this race last year, and uh, he's proven it. He was not a one-lap wonder when he sat on pole, and he's all the way down on the apron. And then moving and, and down, then, they're smart and, and, and racing see, right there, yeah. Darrell. Did you see Jeff Gordon? Go to the inside. You're faster than me. You call me. Pass me here. You can't stand to have somebody on your back bumper. you got to get them out from behind you. It's like the joke about the old bull and the young bull standing up at the top of the pasture looking down at all the cows and just waved Elliot Sadler by. Go get him, son. Yeah. I'll be down there in a minute. Things that go bump at Darlington. This is NASCAR on Fox.
slow. Big gap behind him. All clear. 3230, 60's in front of you. The coming back to you, man. Be smooth. NASCAR on Fox, presented by Michelin, is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Welcome back to Darlington at 175 laps. Mark Martin leads from Elliott Sadler and Jeff Gordon. Dave Blaney has taken fourth place Boy, from Dale Earnhardt Jr. really looks good, Larry. I mean, that sucker's getting it. Yeah, he just put the Kenny Wallace down a lap. Uh, that was the 20th place car, so we have 19 cars on the lead lap. There you see the graphic right there. 18 laps to Mark Martin's probably on pit road. That will be mainly for tires, not for fuel. And there you see he's almost four seconds ahead of second place, Elliott Sadler. Five cautions in the first 74 laps. Since then, we've had two long green flag runs. Matt Kenseth now battling Mike Skinner for seventh place. If you want to know what backpedaling looks like, that's kind of what it looks like on the 17 car. Starting to see a few cars come to pit road. This is a little bit early. We still feel like we're about 15 or 20 laps away. Ryan Newman went a lap down. He came to pit road along with Robbie Gordon, Greg Biffle, Johnny Benson, and now Kenny Schrader in the 49. Remember when Kurt Busch missed the pit entrance. He was running in eighth position. And trying to get to his pit cost him six spots when pit stops cycled through. He was back to 14th. Since then, he has climbed up to 10th spot, but those have been hard spots to regain. And, and, and just time on the racetrack, he's about a half a lap down now to his teammate leader, Mark Martin. They did not have time to put that spring rubber in the right front of Kurt Busch's car. They're talking now about taking one out of the right rear on the next pit stop. Yeah, I mean, Daryl Mike, as competitive as things are on pit road, to me, putting a rubber in, that's like a last resort because you're going to give up so much time, whether it's under caution under green. So I'm sure they've talked about other adjustments to keep from having to do that. You just got, I know what you'd be telling me, you're just going to have to live with it because we don't have the time. Putting one in the front is very difficult to do. Martin's lead on Elliott Sadler, 3.8 seconds. Jeff Gordon is a further one second behind, running in a comfortable third. He's four seconds ahead of Dave Blaney. Man, these cats come in and get the tires. They go flying by the leader and everybody else. You think something happened to them. <laughs> Let's go to the pits of the third place car. Here's Matt. Mike, back in the year 2000, Caleb heard the catch cam man for Jeff Gordon was completing his senior year at College of Virginia Tech, and he was the holder for the place kicker on the football team. A chance meeting with Brian White, so the team manager in the 24, led to not only an internship, but then a full-time job as a team engineer. The guy who he used to hold for, Shane Graham, is actually a guest this week of the 24. He came by the shop. He pit practiced with the team. He jacked the car. He changed tires. He carried the tires, and they said, Looking at the stopwatch, he has a better future as an NFL kicker currently with the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> Jeff Gordon is kicking some today up there in third place, four-time winner. 
You know, they always say two crew chief's heads is better than one, so I'm going to confirm my crew chief down at the Hollywood Hotel. Then I'm going to let that? you know what I'm going to probably do. Who said Jeff, that? these guys pitted under green with about 162 laps to go. If I kind of try to divide that into three runs, two more stops, rather than stretch it to 65 laps, I may back it up to about 60 laps on this set and get the advantage of each set of tires that 60 laps to get to the end of this thing should we go green the rest of the way. That's the best way that I know of that you can maximize each run, Larry. You know how much the tires drop off. We've already documented it with Joe Nemechek, how much his tires fell off. Those last five or ten laps can cost you as much as six or seven seconds if you're not careful. Yeah, boy, I tell you, that 38 car is coming in a hurry, guys. But uh, he's closing up on Mark Martin. He's going to be right there by the time they make their pit stops. Just stand by. We'll get you four fresh tires here real quickly. Can I have a drink of water? I'll get that next stop. Pressure from behind, the four cars pitting this time. All clear, all clear. Green flag pit stops have begun. Mike Skinner is done. Dale Jarrett's in. Jeff Green, Rusty Wallace, and Joe Nemechek are on pit road. Mark Martin leads by 3.8 seconds. Yeah, two. Trouble, John Andretti. Hard crash on the front straightaway. Caution is out. Boy, this is going to hurt a bunch of guys. Well, yes, let's see. Will. No, I don't know, Larry. Pit road is pretty clean. Yeah, but you had a lot of cars on pit road that had just went a lap down, and they'll have fresh tires. Mark Martin's over in the middle of three and four right now. Looks like Ricky He's Rudd's trying, to, trying come. to come to get that lap back. He's coming inside. And will. So will Larry. Looks like Larry Foyt. Four. And Mark eases to the caution flag. I think did Jarrett lose a lap? Yeah, Jarrett, Dale Jarrett, who had pitted along with Rusty Wallace, Jeff Green, Jimmy Spencer, John Andretti, who caused the caution. All those guys had been on the pit road. John Andretti had pitted six laps ago, and before that car even slid to the wall, the left rear sheet metal was all torn off it. 
Let's have a look here. Top of your screen. Oh. Looked uh, like uh, Jimmy Spencer in the seven car got into his left rear. And Jimmy was one of the cars on fresh tires, too. He had just been to pit road about four or five laps ago. Man. Now, what that'll do for those guys like Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace, they will stay out. They will be at the tail end of the lead lap. They will be in front of Mark Martin and all these guys leading with hopes of caution coming out right after the restart. This happens, this, I can't tell you how many times this same scenario has happened at this place. Because you get, you got to come early sometime to get tires because your car is so bad and you have a problem on the racetrack and you end up in trouble. Because right now we're only showing 11 cars on the lead lap. There should be about six or seven at the tail end of the lead lap. So it be Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Green, and Jimmy Spencer. John Andretti is okay. He's taking the helmet off. He's going to take in a little time getting out of the car as pit road is open. Jeannie? Well, Robert Booty Barker luring his driver in with four fresh tires. And you know that's important around here. He's making his way down pit road, but also saying, hey, please, if you can get to the windshield, can you tear that off? Because that's getting pretty nasty, as you can imagine, from all the debris on the track. Just tire pressure adjustments, the four tires and fuel. Dick? Kenseth was preparing to come in at any rate within a lap or two, but this is a break for him. They're going to make a couple of minor adjustments in the car to Steve. Mark Martin's going to get a chassis adjustment. Catch cam man Scott Kurtz taking one and a half turns of fight out of the right rear to Matt. Latarn and Craven both making a wedge and track bar adjustment. Four tire change for Gordon. He's going to beat the six off pit road. It's going to be a race for the 38. It's going to be close, Mike Joy. Very close cutting off pit road. I think Gordon, Gordon got it, yeah. Beat Kurt Busch, who's right back in the thick of things here. And John Andretti climbed from his car uninjured. He is okay after colliding with Jimmy Spencer and then the inside wall. Let's show you the race off pit road, and it was, as Matt pointed out, a close one. Ricky Craven, those guys had a good stop, came off fourth. How about some attaboys here? So we're under caution for the sixth time today in Darlington. Got a lot of race to go, Mike. will be 100 laps to go next time by 100. Have numerous uh, workers over there in two right now. No, man, get your big old drink of water. Uh, get your good restart. Uh, race this old racetrack. You've been doing a great job, man.
Fiesta Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Michelin, is brought to you by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. By Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership, let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. By Pepsi-Cola, experience the joy of Pepsi. And by The Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. So listen up, the Darlington, you don't race each other. You race the track. You can't even get on pit road here without having trouble. It's real tough to get out off the track just to get... It's all right. And we've seen some breakdowns here in Darlington. Moments ago, lap 189, sixth caution flag comes out. Looks like Jimmy Spencer gets on the back of John Andretti, and it uh, looks like uh, Jeff Hammond, Andretti's uh, tire, appears to explode. Yes, it did right there, Chris. But right now, what happens is when Jimmy got into the sidewall of that tire, if you look right here, it's just very thin. It's a very thin part of the race tire right there. And what he did, when he punctured that, the tire itself basically exploded, tearing the rear quarter panel off the car, spinning Andretti around, and back into that inside retainer wall right there. So, you know, this is something that was very, very, you know, it was an accident right there off at four, but it's very, very thin. you got to be careful. You pointed that out in the pre-race show. And, of course, Jeff Gordon currently the leader here, trying to win this race for the seventh time. Pole sitter Elliott Sattler running second. Let's check in with Steve Burns on Dale Earnhardt, Jr. Steve? And Chris Dale Earnhardt Jr. had to pit road a second time. The front tire changer, Phil Dry, did not get all the lug nuts tight on the left front tire. Jr. losing three spots. He was eighth. He'll restart 11th. Let's go to Matt. And Elliot Sadler came in. He got beat off pit road. He said the car was just so loose on that last run, he could barely keep it off the wall. Lap after lap, they made an air and wedge adjustment. Same as on his last stop. Dick Bergman. Well, Matt Kenseth also had problems on his pit stop. One of the lug nuts on the front uh, just didn't go on the way it was supposed to, so uncharacteristically, they lost several spots here on pit road. The good news, though, is the car is better on long runs. The longer Kenseth runs, the better his car goes in comparison to others. It just is not comparatively as good as it might be on fresh tires. Unfortunately, that's the situation he's in right now, fresh tires. Thanks, Dick. Here's a look at the pit stop summary. Jeff Gordon went in fourth, came out first. He was the big, uh, big gainer. Ricky Craven from ninth to fourth. Boy, good stop for those guys. Good stop. A near sellout crowd here at Darlington, South Carolina. Only the covered grandstand seats in turn two have some vacancies. So let's uh, crank up our Pepsi fan cam. I know I saw a leprechaun or two. <laughs> Just a few that out there. I tell you, DW, that sun's starting to pop out. This is the first time we've seen this for the day. We're hearing Dick and Matt and Steve and Jeannie talk about these cars changing. That's going to do it a lot. Now, you've got about five or six cars that will restart the race up in front of Jeff Gordon trying to get that lap back. Mike Skinner, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff Green. Yeah, it's pretty warm out there right now, Larry. I just stuck my head out the door, and uh, the sun's out. It's the warmest it's been down here in about three days. You see Joe Nemec up dropping back. He sped on pit road to keep from going a lap down. The penalty, you start at the end of the longest line, but that's a lot better than being caught a lap down. So sharp move for Nemechek and his crew. He'll restart at the end of the line. We'll crank it up for you on this restart.
Jeff Gordon your leader as we close in on 200 laps. Now he is not at the front of the pack because of cars on the tail end of the lead lap Dale Jarrett and Mike Skinner. Matt. Well Mike one thing to keep in mind about Jeff Gordon he's very focused inside that race car is to what the surroundings are earlier in the race when the sun dipped behind the clouds he told Pucci Robbie Lewis keep in mind it's now overcast they're thinking about adjustments and then he came out and said you know what the sun's come back out now keep one thing in mind if you were loose before you're really going to be loose now with this racetrack getting some more heat into it and Gordon was much looser earlier they made those adjustments it's going to be interesting to see how they help that race car. Good point, man. Now, one driver who was quick down pit road was Ricky Craven. Restarted fourth. That's where he runs. Let's go back to crew cam here on his catch can man on that stop, which moved Craven from ninth to fourth coming out of the pits. There you see him take the first can from the fuel man. Holds it while the field man sticks a second can in. And the tight Pontiac scoots out and gains a few spots on pit road. Five to be exact. I tell you, this is a good run for Ricky late in this race. Started back in 31st. I talked to his crew chief this morning, Scott Miller. They had every spring in that race car laying on the ground. They had stuff everywhere making multiple changes on that car this morning. The guy that's fought his way back from making adjustments and hitting the wall and everything else is that 20 car, Larry. I watched him. He's really got it dialed in now. And he seems to be really coming to the front. He's up to seventh. Got a good looking car right now. And we watched him, Daryl. He made two 40 lap runs in practice yesterday, trying different things. Daryl and Larry, the guy we hadn't said a whole lot about today, is running pretty strong and knows his way around Darlington. It's Bill Elliott. He's had worked his way up to eighth place, coming on strong here late in the race. And uh, being a veteran around here, I'm sure he understands this racetrack as well as temperatures changes. So probably making the right calls along with that crew chief over there. Uh, Mike Ford and all them guys pretty pretty racy right now. Yeah, he, you know, he just consistently finishes in the top 10 here, uh, Jeff. He stays out of trouble. You don't talk a lot about him, but as the laps wind down, he always ends up in the top 10. Look at all the big numbers on the board for career starts today. Terry Labonte, 750th. Elliott, his 700th career starts. And other drivers with milestones to celebrate today. Plus, Bill, he didn't go a lap down on it. He was just about ready to uh, pit when that caution came out. So that kept him on the lead lap, too. Speaking of staying or not staying on the lead lap, Jeff Gordon is 24. Oh. Dale Jarrett trying to stay on the lead lap. They've beaten and banging. That's not going to help neither one of them. Mark Martin is six. Yeah, they, uh, they're not helping their calls at all right there, what they're doing, neither one. A little bit of temper flaring there. Yeah, I think Dale Jarrett, I mean, you know, he's a, he's a guy that doesn't lose his temper very often, but I'd say right there at that moment, uh, he was just about ready to give Jeff Gordon more than he bargained for. Let's check with Matt. But Mike, remember back in, I believe it was 1998, last lap battle with the 99 of Jeff Burton. Gordon knew where he needed to be going into turn one when he's banging fenders with the 88. I did. He did get a little damage on that right front fender. Jeff Gordon did. Uh, that's that could hurt his uh, performance here as we go along. And here comes Mark Martin closing on Gordon, who I think looked look a little tentative down in one and two, yeah, Darrell. I think trying to make sure that car is OK. I think he got that right front fender shoved in a little bit. It looked like he did. At least got some black marks all over it. And Daryl, the crew chiefs in the garage, they've been confirming to me what I think we've been seeing. These cars are so fender sensitive. You just keep just bend in one of those fenders, it changes the way that whole car drives. Well, with the body location rule this year, Larry, uh, the fenders are certainly different than they've ever been before, and I think they are more critical. Let's, let's show you this again. As Dale Jarrett fought to stay, to keep from going a lap down here, or rather another lap down, he's now two laps down. And right here about now, Dale Jarrett's having to really control his emotions, because what he would really like to do is take a hard right. Now things have settled out with Jeff Gordon four tenths of a second on Mark Martin. Everybody's right back to race pace with Sadler, Blaney, and Craven filling the top five.
360, Joey, make sure that one car helps us out now. Welcome back to NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Michelin. We're at Darlington Raceway, right near Florence, South Carolina. There's a look at the new grandstands, turn four and turn one, from our Budweiser aerial coverage. Jeff Gordon leading Mark Martin by seven-tenths of a second. They're all three right there together. Gordon, Mark Martin, and Elliot Sadler, they're all just kind of right there together. Dave Blaney is three and a half seconds off the lead. Ricky Craven four seconds back. And Kurt Busch five seconds back. Our pole sitter, Elliot Sanders, had quite a day. Here's Matt. Mike, he's gone from tight to lose, tight to lose. We told you on that last stop, he was so loose on the last run, he could barely keep it off the wall. They made an air pressure wedge adjustment. Now Elliot says the car is on the tight side. And Larry Mack, one interesting note, crew chief Raymond Fox the third told Elliot that they made a bit of an air pressure adjustment on the inner liner to help out his loose condition. Yeah, I mean, Matt, what you can do, remember that inner liner is a tire within a tire. It's a safety tire inside that radial tire. And you normally run it about 15 pounds more air pressure than the outer tire. That's to keep the air pressure from equalizing between the two. But you can also soften the spring rate of one of those tires, or all of those tires, by dropping that inner liner pressure. You just got to make sure you don't get it too close to the outer tire pressure, or you end up with that equalized tire that'll be a vibration. You saw how close the front three are. Look at fourth and fifth right here. Dave Blaney and Ricky Craven. Blaney's best. Blaney's best Darlington finish, 19th September of 01, and he is hunting his first top five Winston Cup finish. Well, he, he, he's done a yeoman's job today, uh, Mike. I don't care where he finishes because he's been up front all day. The cars look good, and uh, I just I just get excited for him and uh, for Booty because I just know how get, this is just exciting for them too. Oh, everybody's a man of new tires now. They'll come back to you. Just point, Dave. Just ride, Dave. Just ride. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Don't you wish you could just reach out and put your arms around the neck of that crew chief sometimes? <laughs> Jeannie? Well, that has been a recurring theme in the 77 pit. Robert Booty Barker telling his driver to just relax. Dave Blaney is feeling the, the 
stress of the cars behind him. Booty keeps reminding him, we've got to save those tires. We've got to have rubber at the end of this thing, so just be smooth. Good job on the corners. Stay smooth. Yeah, I mean, it's so important here. We heard Bobby Hamilton after the Truck Series race the other day, the Craftsman Truck Series race, said he never raced anybody all day long. He raced this racetrack. He said he even caught himself wanting to race somebody and said, no, I can't do it. I'll overwork my tires and my car. Yeah, you just don't want to drive in the corner so hard that you make the car do an extra slide. It's going to slip around, and, and there's nothing you can do about that. You just don't want to make it work harder than it has to. 12 cars on the lead lap. Michael Waltrip is 10th of 12. Matt Kenseth and Mike Skinner behind him. Uh, his teammate, Dale Jr., just ahead. Let's go to Michael's pit. Here's Steve. Mike, on the most recent restart, Michael Waltrip restarted sixth. He's now down to 10th. His crew chief, Slugger Laddie, giving him similar advice as Booty Barker is to Dave Blaney, saying, hey, be patient. The tire pressures will come up, and the car will come in for you. We are set up for the long runs. If this thing goes green, we can win this race. Here's the thing, uh, Larry and, and Jeff and Mike, too. Uh, the sun's out. I mean, I guarantee you right now this track is different than it's been since we've been here all weekend long. Some of these cars are coming. That Some of these cars like that and are taken to it, and others are not very happy right now. And there you see his crew chief, Slugger Lavi. And just remember, Daryl, Steve, they're making the right, adjustments on the car. Run, two to three tenths this run, same time in. Be patient, man. There you hear him giving him giving a little direction to Michael, but the adjustments they're making on this car, they're having to make during this race. They weren't able to practice this car after wrecking in practice with 10 minutes to go. The testing really paid off for them because it, it gave them a place to start with their with their backup car. Jeff Gordon has led 31 laps. He's our leader. Mark Martin has led 71 laps and has caught the leader. Yeah, we're going to have a good little race here in a minute. And when they get to racing each other, Elliot Sadler right back there behind them will get up there, and we're going to have us a three-way battle for the lead. One thing I've seen today, Daryl, is that Mark Martin has taken his time passing cars. He, he catches them. He's in no rush. He waits until the opportunity comes to him without using up a lot of his race car. Yeah, this is a Mark Martin kind of day. Just saw him go by Mike Skinner in the four car. I think what Mike did, but he did what he needed to do. He was on the tail end of the lead lap. I think he overdrove his race car. He was able to stay out in front of the leaders over 30 laps, but I think it finally just, he used his stuff up. But he wants to try to stay with these guys, still hoping that Jeff would let him back on the lead lap should a caution come out. Matt Yoakum's in the leader's pit. The radio on the 24 team has been silent over the past few laps. Finally, in lap 220, Gordon spoke and said, the car is now really tight. They told him how many laps were left. He said, look, we've got almost 70 plus laps to go. We just got to hang on and just keep managing our own race. See Mark taking his time, getting past Mike Skinner. Not using up a lot of car, but he's going to have a mirror full of Elliott Sadler pretty soon. We just saw Kevin Harvick in the 29 car. He came to pit road. Remember, he was involved in one of those wrecks a little bit earlier. He's seven laps down. Just uh, really came in here optimistic about this racetrack and this race, and they really have had a bad day. Yeah, he had a good run in the truck series the other day. He ended up having engine problems, but he led the race a while. You know, he was feeling pretty racy when, we, uh, when they started. Gordon the leader, Martin second, Sadler third, Blaney fourth, and Ricky Craven from Maine in fifth. Dick Bergren's in his pit. Craven started in 31st position. His crew chief is Scott Miller. Can you get four more spots? Well, we have our car's really good on long runs, and if it goes long, we'll see what we'll see what we can do. But those those four in front of us are really strong, and we got a couple challenges from behind, so we're just gonna stay after and see what we can get here. Craven's best track probably is Rockingham. This place is very similar to Rockingham, so it's no surprise that Ricky Craven is having a great day today, Mike. It's been a lot of today in the top five, and for most of the day, he's been the fastest Pontiac in the field. And Larry, I don't know what the, the Pontiac teams have found. Maybe it's just Darlington and the Pontiac works good here, but you know, with the way Nadu qualified and ran before he had trouble, now Craven up there, looks like these Pontiac boys are getting their act together. And of course, Mike Skinner has been running up here the front all day as well, so I believe you're absolutely right. Starting to figure that balance out in down force. Four Chevrolets, five Fords, one Dodge, one Pontiac on the lead lap here in Darlington.
clear, all clear. to go. Nice job. Racing on Fox is presented by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. Welcome back to Darlington NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series on Fox presented by Michelin and Jeff Gordon, a couple of veterans holding off a of Mark Martin at this point. You see the pole sitter, Elliot Sadler, after 232 laps, we're going 293. Former championship crew chief Jeff Hammond with me at the Hollywood Hotel and two time Daytona 500 winning crew chief Larry Mack upstairs. Let's do a little discussion here because we have one more pit stop to go, Jeff, and I want you to break down of the top 10 here. Who should be gambling? Who should stop at what point? Well, I think uh, my illustrious compadre up here in the booth will tell you right quick. Some of these guys are about to short pit, aren't they, Larry? If they want to get back into this race. And I'm thinking if I'm Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Bill Elliott or even Michael Walter. And they're running they, seven, eight, nine. They right? need to cut a lot of ground right now. They're going to have to gamble a little bit. And the only way I feel like they can pick up enough time is they've got to stop, you know, four or five, maybe six laps shorter than a guy like Jeff Gordon who's leading the race because. That's the only way they can catch him. That's the only way they even got a chance to catch him unless there's a caution flag. So, Larry, you agree with that? You have to take that risk if you're not in that top four? I mean, you just got to be so careful because the deeper we go in this run, the more these cars are going to start sliding around. And it can happen what happened to Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Mike Skinner a while ago when John Andretti spun out and brought that caution out. It's a catch-22, but the three guys that have to almost look at pitting together unless you want to give up something is Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Elliott Sattler, the top three, regardless of when you pit. So. It yeah, I think you want to take advantage of those fresh tires, but then you're going to hold your breath till it cycles through. And El I think we've already seen that happen with those guys that got a lap down there a while ago. I, I feel a little nervous about that today. You may also see Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth short pitting because they're 12 to 14 seconds behind. And I don't know if I'd want to wait till the till they get lapped to do it. Let's check with Matt in the leaders pit. Well, the debate to short pit or go the full fuel run is going up and down pit road. Robbie Loomis, a critique for Jeff Gordon. So what do you do? Do you short pit? Oh, caution on the racetrack. Debris between Debris. turns three and four has put us under the caution for the seventh time today. And all that talk of strategy goes to the wind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We've got a couple of cars coming, trying to get their lap back. Mike Skinner and Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett trying to get one of two. I don't think they're going to accomplish it. No, too far back. Too far back. Here comes Jeff Gordon. Far behind that, way far back. 
It's Ron yeah, Thiel, I'm spotter. Your side on new tower, so whatever you think. Talking Jeff Gordon to the caution, seventh one of the day at lap 237. Three is too tight out in the boat, bud. Come back. Where do you feel the tightness of the boat? Into turn one. Entry into the corner there. The four getting into turn one and just wants to push up to the wall. Boy, what Robbie Loomis has to do there has to make sure that he yeah, he tries to fix that race car, but don't don't unhook the rear end doing it. Don't yeah. make that thing where it starts getting loose off because this could very well be the last pit stop with the last adjustments. And that's why you go down on the apron getting into turn one because the cars really don't want to turn there. You get too tight there, uh, it just makes it more and more difficult to get back to the gas and carry any speed off the corner. Darrell, let me ask you a question right here. Remember, he got to beating and banging with the 88 car early on. I'm wondering about damage to the right front fenders affecting that car as far as rotating down through the corner. Well, that would be where it would affect it the most as it goes down into the corner because you lose some of the downforce. You can see it's caved in right there on the front, so he has lost some effect of that fender. They'll probably snatch that bad boy out on the pit stop. 11 cars on the lead lap, all 11 to pit road for adjustments, four tires, possibly the last pit stop with 55 laps to go. But I'm going to be telling you as a driver, don't do anything that's going to get me out late. I want to be out leading this race. Steve? Martin Martin safely in. Richie Ben Leslie saying just be smooth, concentrate, half a turn down in the left rear. The only adjustment to the number six of Mark Martin. Let's go to Matt Yoko. And Jeff Gordon's team already going to work. Now coming along on the left side, they're going to make a track bar adjustment to try to fix the race car. Easy off. Good stop by the 24 guys. A lot of congestion about the center of that pit road. I think they came off pit road just about the way they went in. And next time by, the car is a lap or more down, will pit. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know what tells me Mark Martin's happy with this car? Very rare to hear Mark Martin adjusting in half a pound and half a round. Normally, he's two pounds or two rounds. He's been pretty happy with that car all day. He knows he don't want to over-adjust this thing. It's been pretty good. Here's the race off pit road at lap 238. Gordon, Martin, Sadler, Bush, Craven, Blaney, and the rest of the cars on the lead lap. All right, behind the 77 in case you didn't hear it. Roughly 53 laps when we go green. 55 right now. Okay, man, P6. Still uh, 11 cars on the lead lap. Hope this uh, car comes to you here a little bit quicker. Dude, I just got a real, I got a real right front. I think we missed it with the right front spring a little bit. See that or shock. Because I just got the right front tire too much. But uh, we're going to have to come up on that air now if we have another caution, huh? Yeah, Kenny's on it right now. But it is one to go, it's 53 to go. Here come the lap cars, they'll be to your inside.
Yeah, most of them guys on the inside have not given an inch. And I've talked to a bunch of them already. Okay, just watch them, that's cool. Yes, sir, 10-4. There's officials on pit road to look at every Winston Cup pit stop and you'll see coming in from the right the inspector is going to come in here to have a look at the left front on Mark Martin's car. And he's pointing to where there's a stud with no lug nut and Mark Martin had to come in and replace it. That's a shame. So he's on the he's the last car on the lead lap for the restart. He went from second to 11th, but with with the lap cars on the inside, it's like restarting this race in 22nd position. A lot of cars to fight. And this is when you come back out and you have a caution right now. Something happens to you. You, you know what you're going to say. And this late in the race, nobody's going to give you a break we, of no kind. We had no business back there in the first place. But Martin is still in it to win it. He's one of 11 cars on the lead lap as we get the restart with 52 laps to go in Darlington. Jimmy Johnson in the wall off turn two. Yeah, he just shoved up there, got up on top of it, died. Not sure he's gonna, I don't think it hurt it that much. It's still going. This is where you kind of forget about racing the racetrack, getting this late in the race. Boy, Kurt Busch, he got a heck of a runoff turn two. He's right up on the rear bumper, Jeff Gordon. He's going to pull to the inside, heading down the back stretch. He wants the lead of this race. Missed his pit under the green flag earlier, lost six spots. Now he's right back in it. And, and does the big slide. I've seen him, I saw him do that once before, and he didn't quite make it. <laughs> he said, I'll fall back in here and try that again. And while they were doing that, Elliot Sadler in the 38 pulls right up on Kurt Busch's rear bumper. And a three wide here. Uh, Jeff Green gets a bit of bumper from Bill Elliott. And there's Matt Kenseth back with them up front. Bush going to try it again. Yeah, Same song, second of verse. Run off of that second turn. But boy, Jeff Gordon drives it down in there to three and four. Come on in there, Elliott. You make it three. Let's get a three way battle going here. This looks like that high line is just the way to go through three and four. You keep that momentum. There's a lot better grip up there. Boy, Kurt Bush got to be careful going here. Ah! Good job. Elliot Sadler's the one that's got it. But Jeff can't get off a of turn two over there. He's pushing and the car's a little too tight. Yikes! Elliot Sadler, he ran out of racetrack over there. He's gonna possibly lose second position, but boy, he bailed her off into turn three. Nah, he did. He just got out there and got real close. <laughs> got the Darlington strike. Daryl and Larry, the way I'm seeing this right now, somebody needs to throttle these guys back. Kurt Busch as well as Elliott Sadler and realize we still got almost 40 some 48 laps to go. You go too hard too soon here, you're going to use your tires up, and a veteran like Jeff Gordon will run off and leave you, or he'll drive that back by you and still wind up winning this race. They got to show some patience. Yeah, Jeff Gordon will. He's going to be hard to shake out of that lead. I've seen him. He gets out front here at Darlington, and man, he's hard to get around. I'm going to give you four fellows to watch who did not battle hard right from the restart Dave Blaney, Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Tony Stewart. And Dave Blaney, he has been good on those long runs. We've talked about that all day long. He took care of his stuff on this restart, watching these guys up there beating and banging, You're using their right, stuff Dave, up. Run your line. Gonna knock a hole here for you. They're still telling him, run your line, run your race, race this racetrack. Elliot Sadler is, I'll tell you, Elliot Sadler's probably got the quicker of the two cars by about a tenth looking at the lap times. Well, I know we're here at Darlington, but I can't wait till next week, DW. That's old DW's house up there, Bristol. <laughs> I love Half this. mile high bank, beating and banging for sure there. Arrow don't need anything. Now, Mark Martin had to restart 11th because he had to replace that lug nut. He has now climbed one spot to 10th. Yeah, he just went around Bill Elliott down here in turns three and four, so he's he's got a good car. We know that, and uh, he's still got time. And his lap times are as good as Elliott Sadler's in second place, and Jeff Gordon's the leader. And that's back there battling cars, his lap times were that good. Just moved around Bill Elliott to take over ninth. 
I tell you, old Bill Elliott, that nine car, 700 career start, 50th start here. He's been pretty racy all day long here today. This is his race, racetrack where he's always excelled. It's just a track where you got to be smooth, you got to be patient, and Bill does just race the racetrack. If you notice, he's never got anybody much around him. He's usually riding along all by itself. Elliott, twice a winner of this race, twice a winner of the Southern 500, and right behind him, the point leader, Matt Kenseth. Here's Dick. Matt Kenseth has had an incredibly eventful weekend for sure. Earlier yesterday, he dragged an oil line on the racetrack. They thought maybe it was a blown engine with all the smoke it wasn't. Earlier in today's race, he spun, wound up in an accident, and now they're having trouble getting the car dialed in. Uh, it seems as if every pit stop these guys make, they don't quite know what's going to happen to the car when they take the green flag. Sometimes it's pushing, sometimes it's loose. It pushes here, it's loose there. They just don't know what to expect from this thing. But all day long, it has been best on long runs, so they are hoping this thing goes all the way to the checkered flag. And I tell you, now, Dick, we talked earlier, the sun was out. Now it's went back in. So, again, this racetrack is changing, plus the weather keeps changing on these guys. Is it too bad about Mike Skinner back there about the fourth car back? He's got a car capable of keeping up with these guys, but that pit stop when the caution came out is what got him in trouble. Mark Martin continues to work toward the front. He's past Tony Stewart and moves him up to eighth. Our leader, Jeff Gordon, just two tenths ahead of pole sitter Elliot Sadler. Go to the leader's pit, Matt Yoakum. Mike, back in the spring of 2000, Jeff Gordon had a tough start to the year, was winless. The fabricator Steve Burke felt like they needed to have a change in luck. So he wrote the initials and car number of his childhood hero, the late Richie Evans, RE61, on the front bumper. In the next 103 races, Gordon won 12 times. Each week, Bergie would write the initials and car number. Last week, Car Chief Steve Letarte was washing the front of the car. He washed it off. He forgot to rewrite it. Gordon went out and finished second, nearly won the race. Guess what tradition came to an end this week? Missing Richie Evans' car number, but certainly his memories are still strong with this race team. Evans, the nine-time National Modified Division champion from Rome, New York. Forty laps to go. Who wore the new off their tires and who will be in contention to win as this race comes to conclusion.
Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Michelin. It's brought to you by Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. Welcome back to Darlington. Here's where the Coca-Cola Racing family is running in today's race. Several of their drivers on the lead lap back through Bill Elliott. As Jeff Gordon enjoys a lead of just one quarter of a second on Elliott Sadler. Sadler trying to win his first Darlington victory in his ninth start here. Terry Labonte won his fifth start here. Jeff Gordon his sixth. Dale Earnhardt got his first win in his seventh start. A fellow named Darrell Walter won his ninth start here just as Sadler is trying to do today. But Mark Martin is the man who's coming restarted 11th. He has climbed up to 7th running just as fast as the leader. Yeah, I think the problem is, though, all the cars in between him and the leader, they're all running about the same lap time. The further he goes, the harder it's going to be. I, I, yeah, I'm watching Mark, but I'm watching that 38 car. And i got to tell you, Mike, you asked me this question when we were at break. What do you do now? If I'm Elliot Sadler, I'm thinking two things. I'm following a guy that's won six races here. He's the winning this driver here right now. I've got a car that's set on the pole. I need to win a race for my sponsor to prove people that I that Robert Yates put me in this car for the, all the right reasons. I'm up on the wheel right now and I'm not holding anything back, but I'm not sure that that 24 car is doing the same thing. Let's look back then at the third place car of Kurt Busch and go to his pit. Here's Dick. Well, right after the green flag came out, Mike, and he had fresh tires, the word that he was hearing in his earpiece was tire management. Take care of your stuff. But just a few moments ago, Kurt Busch keyed his radio and said he's having problems with his power steering. He's in third. He's dropped back just a tad. Now, right behind that group, look at right here, Craven, and then Blaney, and then Jarrett. Darrell, when you can see the leader, and, and you think you're gaining on them. Is that when you're at most risk of using up your car? Well, what you do, if you overdrive these turns just a little wee bit, that thing will step up there and knock the wall down. So right now is when you got, you got a lot of things going on in the cockpit. you got to think about how am I going to win this race, but you also got to remember i got to race the racetrack, and i got to have a little bit of tire left at the end of this thing with 10 to go. So a lot of things going on in the cockpit right now. But you know, Darren, going back to what Dick Berger was talking about on that power steering, we're hearing more and more people have power steering problems. I think what it is, these guys are doing so many things to their power steering system to keep from robbing horsepower. And trust me, this is not a racetrack you want to lose your power steering this late in the race. No, and the other thing is, Larry, if you keep dropping the air pressure down in these tires, you get it lower and lower and lower, particularly the left sides. That steering box will get like a tight spot in it because it's got to fight through that, that radio tire, and sometimes they'll kind of want to lock up with you. Yeah, and his teammate, Matt Kenseth, was having problems with power steering in Atlanta last week, just like Ryan Newman was as well. I, I think sometimes it's just a product of low air pressure, and it just the, pump, the power steering box and the pump can't handle the pressure the tires put on it. Just under 30 laps to go, five cars within two seconds of the lead. Because a radial tire does not want to turn. A radial tire really wants to go straight. You've got to make it turn. You know, Darrell, that pack of Craven, Blaney, and Jarrett, if they kind of quit to race it amongst themselves, they're gaining ground on the leader. But I'm going to tell you, looking out at Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Budweiser car right here, remember he was so good in the beginning of this race, and the weather now is about like it was in the beginning of the race. It's like they lost the handle in the middle portion when that sun was out, and I've been watching the lap times. He pretty much has the quickest race car, but does he have enough time being two or three quarter seconds behind and being back in six? Track position right now is the key. I mean, Jeff, Jeff Gordon's in the driver's seat. He sits there and runs his, runs his kind of race and doesn't make any mistakes, which he's not prone to do. He's going to be a hard man to handle. The interval was closing just a bit, but I think when he catches that next pack of cars, he's also going to have Mark Martin to deal yeah, with. Yeah, and there's no traffic. I mean, they haven't been in traffic. Uh, the restart, the cars are all pretty much strung out, so they don't have any really traffic problems to deal with. That could have a big effect, but I don't think it's going to come into play. And our guys on pit road that constantly feed us information, even though they may not be reporting it on air, the track temperature is the coolest it's been all day long. Jeff Gordon leads Elliott Sadler now by almost half a second. When we come back, we'll take you to the checkered flag. Leader running flat. 
tires to run 3250. Big log jam up here. The 24 hit the wall and he's kind of slow. Everybody's getting up on him. Nice job. No pressure from behind. Thirty-one ninety-five. Nice lap. Need more of them. NASCAR wins to come racing on Fox is presented by Michelin because so much is riding on your tire and brought to you by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse Lowe's Improving Home Improvement by Pepto-Bismol first aid for stomachs uses directed and by Valvoline's Max Life take better care of your higher mileage vehicle with Valvoline's Max Life. If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. Elliot Sather's going to make a run for the lead against Jeff Gordon, and watch how this turns out. This yeah, I mean, when that happened right there, Kurt Busch was four or five car lengths behind him at the start finish line. Elliot was just being real, he was just being too cautious, and he didn't, you know, it's late in the race, he doesn't want to mess up. I understand that, but this cat here was back far enough, he got that momentum off of turn two, and around both of them, he went, baby. And Sadler knew you can't go into that corner three wide. Somebody's got to lift. Wow. There's just, just so much momentum. I mean, the 97 was wide open off that corner where the other two were pedaling, trying to keep off each other. So Kurt Busch is the new leader, and he has driven away. It took Sadler a while to get past Jeff Gordon. Took him two laps to finally see a lap deal. So Kurt Busch now has a 1.4 second lead. But boy, Jeff Gordon, when he went, he went. He has dropped all the way back to eighth position, Darrell. I think he just used that right front tire. We heard him say he's been pushing off the corner, and I think the right front tire is gone on that race. Car. And guess what? I bet Kurt Busch's uh, power steering is working just fine now. Feels pretty good. Yeah, I think the power steering is going to be okay. Tony Stewart and Dale Jarrett. UPS Ford closing up now on now, now wow. here comes Ricky Craven in that Pontiac in the Tide car. I mean, here he is. He's all over the back of, of Elliott Sadler. And of course, Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett, they're racing for position even though they're two laps down. And they're Dave Blaney. I mean, we got some guys up here that, you know, would you predict that some of these cats would be up front at the end of the day? You heard Scott Miller, Ricky Craven, Elliott Sadler. He just about got that Darlington stripe right there in one and two, but you heard him say his car, Ricky Craven, the tied car, good on long runs. There's the car good on long runs, though. Dave Blaney in that 77 car. But you know what? I believe that the 38, the 24, uh, I think those guys used their stuff up racing each other. Yes. And now these guys have kind of laid back in here we come. And I think where it really showed up was in the beginning on that restart. Looks like Ricky Craven and Dave Blaney took it easy when those tires were fresh and the air pressure were down. And there goes the 32 by the 38 right there. And Blaney is all over the back of him. And here comes Dale Jr. And here come three of those cars. And here comes Mark. That Mark's going to get a big run. Three of those cars that were not running hard right at the restart racing everybody. Craven, Blaney, Jr. And, and Kurt Busch, Jimmy Finney, his crew chief, they're loving this because they have put almost three quarters of a straightaway on those guys back there beating and bang like this with about 15 laps to go. It's simple, Larry. You got to start last. <laughs> last year, Sterling Marlin had trouble started this race last. Kurt Busch lost an engine in practice, started 42nd. And now he leads by three seconds. Well, I don't know. I think Jeff Gordon is just, I don't know what's wrong that happened to his car, but he is, he's dog meat now. There's a cat that's led this race forever, sit out there. It didn't look like anybody could touch him. And he is going backwards at a high rate of speed. Matt can update us. 
DW, the crew is speculating he's not the tow. Remember, earlier in the race, Gordon made hard contact with the 88 coming down the front stretch. That was the second hit. The team is speculating Gordon's knocked the toe out. All he said was, I messed up, I got in the wall. And when you knock that toe out out, that definitely can make one of these things push and drive where the front end don't turn. And just being towed out, Larry, will that kill your tire wear? Yes, sir, it will. I mean, these things are designed. We keep talking about this toe out. It's about an eighth of an inch. That means the front of the front tires are an eighth inch wider than the rear. That gives you stability getting in the corner. Plus, we saw that fender damage, Larry. I think that's the big issue. You lost the downforce on the nose. It, it burnt that right front tire up. 13 laps to go. I mean, Jeff Gordon, he's almost getting close to a half a lap down, and that's all happening about nine laps. Mark Martin keeps coming. He's passed Dale Earnhardt Jr. now for fourth place. I tell you, Mark Martin keeps coming, but the cats that are coming are that 32 and that 77. They're not too far behind Kurt Busch in closing. Kurt Busch, he has fairly clean racetrack in front of him. We'll see Larry Ford up there in the 14 car by himself several laps down, so that's fairly clean racetrack. Fastest car on the speedway is Ricky Craven followed closely by Dave Blaney. Craven is coming, I'm telling you, he, I don't think he's going to have time, but if uh, something happened to Bush, you get up here and get in traffic and get woed up a little bit, we got another race on our, we got a race to the finish. Craven is a quarter of a second faster than Kurt Busch with 12 laps to go, Darrell, that's, that's enough time. If he keeps that up, it's just barely enough time to catch him. Put that old washing machine on high <laughs> speed and let her go. That time he was two tenths of a second quicker, so he's definitely catching him. And how about Dave Blaney hunting his first top five wins to cup finish? I, if I was Dave Blaney, Booty, and those guys, I'd feel like I won this race because this is a great run for that team. That cat's going to win a race, said Larry. That 77 car with Booty over there, they're going to win a race before too long. He's been flirting with it, but you know, he seems like he runs good in places where you slide around. What did he do most of his career? Slid around most of his Slid career. And, and guess where we're going next week? you got to have a little of that high bank slide around attitude. Oh, Gordon's in the wall. Gordon's in the wall, and Kenny Wallace got into the back of him. No caution. Well, we're going to stay green. Ten laps to go. The right front gone on Gordon's car. 10 to go. And Darrell, looking at this lead pack, how about Ricky Craven and Dave Blaney in second and third? First, let's see uh, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he gets happened. into turn two, uh, three here. Car goes up the hill, up the hill. Looks like she just doesn't want to turn, and bam, right in the um, wall it goes. And that's just no grip, lack of grip. Almost collected Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace bammed into the back of him, but he kept on going. But look at second and third place as Gordon comes around, and he'll go to pit road with nine laps to go. You have single car teams running in second and third. You have the, the Roush juggernaut leading this race uh, with Bush first and Mark Martin in fourth, but single car teams second and third. How about that? I, but there's, that 97 car could win every race we go to. He is that good, that car is that good. They don't, if they have no engine failures, they have no mechanical failures, that cat can win every race. And you know what, Jack Roush has to be feeling good about that race car up there within a, less than 10 laps of leading this race with all the motor problems. There you see Jack Roush there, Jeff Burton, their teammate losing a motor early in the race. He has to feel good right now. And I bet he can't wait to get back to the shop to tear these engines apart. Yeah, and he's got Mark up there in fourth place too. So, I mean, he's had it. You know, got a lot of cars, gonna have some trouble. It's been feast or famine for Kurt Busch this year. Second at Daytona, second at Rockingham, out of the race at Vegas and Atlanta and a win at Darlington, perhaps. I don't There's know. Matt. I wouldn't count it as a win, man, because that 32 is coming, I'm telling you. Well, the 24 is in DW. They're pulling out the fender on the right front, changing all four tires. He's good to go. Four lap, four races at Darlington have been determined by a last lap pass. Joe Weatherly, Leroy Yarborough, Darrell Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt were the fellows who did it. It's 37 is buzzing and stuff banging off the call today. The only catching in the line. Laney a little kicks the back in there. going to catch 97 and we'll be right there, buddy. <laughs> And what they're telling Dave Blaney is it looks like Ricky Craven will catch Kurt Busch. Right there, make no you can't catch him and he can't catch you. Oh, come on, get out of the way, get out of the way. 
<laughs> and the hopes will be while they're racing side by side, he can get up there with these guys, but they better hurry. Five laps to go. But Ricky Craven is only a half a second back. They have fairly clean racetrack in front of them. Craven's faster by far, and it, I, I tell you, he's got time. It's gonna be it's gonna be really exciting. Really, really exciting. Craven is so good through three and four. And he is all the way against that wall through three and four. I think he's just using that to hold him in the racetrack, because here he comes, baby. Four laps to go this time. Last time it happened here on the last lap, 1987, Dale Earnhardt beat Bill Elliott. 1979, when Darrell beat Richard Petty on the last lap. Jeff yeah, I did. Put the old crossover move on him. And that could happen again today. Jeff Gordon's problems continue. He has to come back to pit road. Watch Still Craven. Wrong with watch right watch Craven on this end of the racetrack. Really gets off the turn four hard. Here he comes. He's there. He'll make the move on him. Going down into turn one, he's going to put the move on him. Three right. laps to go. Craven's going to, the, the thing that Craven is really good, he's good in three and four. Looks like they're pretty even on this end of the racetrack. Yeah, he don't really pull away from him coming off turn two, but right here, going down into turn three, this is where we'll watch him. Watch One this. and a half laps to go. Watch this. Here he goes. Craven gets that high right out next to that wall. Watch. Right watch there. Close. Right there in the middle. Cuts down. He's going to make a down. He's going to get down under him. That's not the way to do it. I don't know. Come on, baby. Come on. Side by side. Two laps to go. Somebody's got to give. Getting into turn one. Nobody. And in the wall goes Bush. That's not, that was not a very good idea. Look, the crossover move, he got into it. Come on, Blair. Good job, man. Hang in there. And here comes Blaney. Blaney oh, oh, is oh. now the best car on the track. Oh, baby, I'm telling you, Kurt Busch is not going to give up the win. No, he's not. They'll be coming to the white flag this time. Ricky Craven's not going to give up either. Come on, Ricky. He gets that right on the high side right there. Kurt Busch is like he's baby. struggling with his race car. Here he comes. Bush here we go again. Right. He's going to wait on this. He's going to put the crossover on him. He realized that wasn't a good move that last time. White flag. Here he goes. He's going to try to slide under him here. Come on, baby. And Blaney's coming. Both these cars are driving terrible right now. Nah. Half a lap to go. Nah, they're driving good. Come on, baby. You can do it on this end of the speedway. Come off the four and get up alongside of him. Half a mile here to go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Who's going to get off here the Here he four? comes. Here he comes. He's got him this time. It's going to be a drag race. Whoa! Wow. They touch. They touch. Craven got him! Craven got him! Craven got him! And Craven! All right! What a finish! Have you ever? No, I've never! Wow! Uh, what a finish! <laughs> that is one happy group right there. That's one great race. I'm going to tell you, it's the goodest race I've ever seen at Darlington. Scott Miller gets his first win as a crew chief. Honey, I get a win. Kyle Wells' engine program gets a win. First year for that engine program. And for the fifth time in Darlington history, a race is settled with a last lap pass. <laughs> we didn't have a last lap pass for the no, win baby, last year. <laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> that was a last, at the start finish line pass there. What a race. I got to see this again. I do too. Let's, let's watch. Coming off turn four onto the front stretch. That's about as close as it'll get right there. And this right here, I don't know what kept them from both wadding them up down here in turn t uh, turn one, but bam, oh boy, Craven really shot out into it. It is amazing they didn't wreck after they crossed the start-finish line. Darrell, if instead of Bush coming down into Craven, if he stays straight, does he beat Craven? I don't think he had any choice, Mike, because Craven came off the bottom and really slammed into him. I think they got hooked together and couldn't get apart. Look at Craven in there. Look at him fighting that steering wheel. And it's a good line. thing that Pontiac's got the kick out on the nose. <laughs> yeah, that was the difference. <laughs> but he wouldn't have won. Look at how close this finish is. Oh. Right there. Wow. <laughs> oh, baby. And I'm going to tell you what, they didn't even need seats in these grandstands because nobody was sitting down. And I, nobody's leaving. Look at this, right to the line. How close can you get it? But now, what's really, when they get on down here, I mean, I, I thought they were both going to wad him up and they'd have to take him to Victory Circle on the rollback. Steve Burns with the runner up. All right, thanks, Mike. Kurt Busch, that was a hell of a race at the end. Tell us your point of view. Tell us about the last lap, last corner. I had to get a lead 
the power steering went away and I've never felt a heavier car in the world. We dug and dug and dug and, and like 10 to go it finally just gave up all together and the car was so tight I couldn't hang on and you know it, it was an awesome race. I didn't give him one, room in one and he didn't give me room out of four. It's the way it's supposed to be. I mean this was some hard fought racing. Kurt when you came across the start finish line hooked together with a 32 did you know who got there first? We came out of four and the wheel snapped out of my hands because I had no power steering so it looked like I turned into him and I grabbed all the wheel I could to turn it back to the right and I looked at his eight post and it was right here with my eight post so you know it's tough we finished second again and you know all the congratulations to the Rubbermaid team on what they do all the hard work that goes into it you know we're just missing one little piece and if we can get a full commitment and make sure that we run every weekend like we're supposed to we can win some races. Thanks Phil. Right, let's go back up to the booth. Kurt Busch will climb from 14th to 6th in the NASCAR top 10. Look no, at no, this he, finish. He climbed to the top of my list. Here's the whole last lap. Craven out of control, Bush into the wall. I thought Craven had him here, but Bush doesn't give up on him, gives you a little wow. shot, gets him loose. Had to get completely out of the throttle. Yep. Look how far Kurt pulls away from him right there. But Kurt couldn't get back in the gas either off of two, so here comes Craven, got some momentum. Here I come, here I come, boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> and watch out, baby. This end of the racetrack, Craven was so good down here. Well, look at the run he got on the high side right, right there. And he comes to the white flag and has one more opportunity. And, and, and here's what he, he knew this time. He said, okay, I made the mistake last lap. I tried to pass him going into one. It didn't work. He's not going to give me that line. I'm going to set him up down here where I know I'm good. So he lays off of him, gets a run on him right here because he knows he's better in three and four. And where would you want to be better? You're coming to the start finish line, best to be good in three and four. Here he goes. He gets up there. Now, he, watch him nail the gas. Makes a run up on him. He says, I got to go to the bottom. Bush wibble, wiggles a little bit. And here he comes. And Craven just, bam, got loose. And if Kurt hadn't been there, I think he'd hit the wall. <laughs> Eight wheels was better than four right got there. Got that right, baby. <laughs> this is some great racing, man. And for all you fans out there that says NASCAR racing has been boring lately, oh. take this. I'm telling you. Like those cars were welded together. Well, you think about Kurt Busch and uh, Dale Jarrett at Rockingham. Now Kurt Busch and Ricky Craven here today. Let's go to Gatorade Victory Lane, Dick Berggren. Ricky Craven, congratulations. Come on out of your race car, my friend. Ricky Craven drove the wheels off it today. The crew is cheering him as they should be. What a run. Oh, here we go. Everybody gets wet. <laughs> hey, that last lap, how sure were you that you were going to be able to make it to the start finish line and not wreck? Oh, my gosh. I had no idea, but I, you know, I've done this for over 20 years. And as a racer, that's it. You dream of that, you know, and uh, being a New England boy and, uh, you know, being attached to this sport, NASCAR, my whole life. I knew there was none, none any tougher than Darlington. So that's the one I wanted to win the worst. And uh, wow, this is sweet. I uh, just got to thank everybody. Thank everybody back home. And uh, it's amazing that you can drive and pray at the same time, but I was doing it. Were you holding your breath on those last couple of laps? You're puffing. I wasn't holding my breath, but I was working pretty hard. It may, it, maybe it didn't look that hard, but I'll tell you what, Kurt is such a good racer. And we got together, and I don't know why we didn't wreck with a couple laps to go and then we said well let's try it again <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh it is absolutely the most fun i've ever had really thankful to have the opportunity to be driving the, the tide pontiac and to have this group of people and uh, really thankful i got these three okay riley and everett and life's good it is good. Congratulations. It's great for the fans who enjoyed this race as well. To Ginny Zelasko. Well, Mark Martin, after a couple of races that didn't go quite the way you wanted to, it's about time, yes? Well, we had a great race car with the Viagra Taurus. Uh, fantastic car today. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just uh, honored and privileged to drive for this uh, race team. Uh, not everything always goes just right every time. And uh, some days you drive around the fence, and some days it's something else. We had a we had a great run today, uh, and my only hope is is that this team can continue to give me uh, just ever fourth or fifth or sixth race through the season if they can give me a race car like that. We'll win a lot of races, you know. They don't have to run that good every week. They don't have to run that good to win, you know, uh, if everything goes your way. But they they've got to be 
pretty competitive and uh, our car was just uh, spectacular today. So you don't have to go to sleep worrying about the lug nut. Matt? And Jeannie after scoring three times, sixth place finishes. Dave Blaney, a career day, third. You can just feel this team getting closer and closer. Yeah, we got some, we got some momentum rolling on our side. Um, Booty is doing a great job with these cars and with my whole crew, and, and uh, I can't thank him and the owners enough for um, putting this deal together over the winter. It's, it's working well. We keep gaining and getting better and better, and, and I can see it. We can feel it. So hopefully we'll just uh, continue on here. A wild finish. Dave Blaney, third here at Darlington. Mike? Ricky Craven with a last lap pass has become the 40th different Winston Cup driver to win at Darlington Raceway. Ricky Craven in a two lap battle to the finish beats Kurt Busch by just this little much. Look at the smoke flying off him. Look at <laughs> they're rubbing on each other like crazy, man. And in Kurt Busch's pit, they're not sure how close was it? Two one thousandths of a second. We've had a great finish at Rockingham, two abreast racing at Las Vegas and at Atlanta. And here we are with a great last lap finish. What a season this is starting out to be. Well, I, I think it's parody. I mean, I really do believe that NASCAR has nailed it with the body location and the, and the common template because we're seeing everybody getting better and better and better. But this race, it, wow. it's my four and away my most favorite. I've won several races. It's my favorite race of all time. To see that finish, those last couple of laps, Kurt, Kurt puts, 
turns to Ricky sideways down there in turn two. They go down to three and four. And come off turn four. It's like, I don't care if we wreck or not. We're going for the win. <laughs> but I think the parity, there are five races. We've had five different winners, three manufacturers. We, we had a record two years ago of winners, 19. We're going to bust that record all to pieces this year. Yeah, plus I'll tell you something else we got to look at. The Tony Stewart, the guy that finished 10th. He's a guy, he's a championship contender. That consistency is there for that team. That's somebody we keep our eye on. And my little brother, Mikey, he's going to be pretty tough, too. Finishes fifth after having to go to the rear of the field, just like Kurt Busch did. Five Fords, three Chevys, a Pontiac, and a Dodge in the top ten. And, boy, Bristol next week, Chris Meyer. <laughs> Hey, Kurt Busch, of course, won there uh, last time, last year. Let's take a look at the points. Matt Kenseth of Roush Racing, uh, hanging on steady. Uh, Jeff Hammond, as we look, Ricky Craven jumps all the way up to fifth. You see Kurt Busch currently running sixth. NASCAR's top ten, the Winston Cup point standings. And uh, we had a little March Madness uh, here in, uh, in, in Darlington. Talk about a, a buzzer beater. Let's go back for a moment. Ricky Craven, of course, a, a Red Sox fan, making New England proud, and a guy who can relate to the Red Sox' struggles at Fenway, certainly a traditional track like Darlington had to enjoy the moment and, and fought Kurt Busch to the finish. Well, I mean, right now, what you saw is one of the nicest guys in racing when it comes to somebody like Ricky Craven, but he really showed he can I mean, get this up is on unbelievable. the wheel. I mean, it's like two heavyweights just duking it out right there over the last couple laps. Who wanted it the most? Well, right there at the end, Ricky Craven got the best of Kurt Busch, but it was by a matter of inches. And as Darrell has said, this is one of the most exciting races I've ever seen here at Darlington, and I've seen a few. People were up at hollering at, at of course, uh, the... Uh, photo finish. NASCAR has a camera at the start finish line. They keep close. Look at the margin of victory. Right. It's just a matter of inches. I mean, it's probably maybe six inches right now. You know, Ricky Craven was able to pull his victory off, but I mean, it was a hard fought day. I mean, it was a lot of guys that were in contention. Mark Martin was in contention. Jeff Gordon looked like he was a shoe in for his seventh win. It didn't happen that way. The lady in black, she worked her little mystery today and she produced a brand new winner. And I'll tell you right now, Ricky Craven will savor this one for a long time to come. And Kurt Busch, I'm sure he can't wait to get to Bristol next week where he can go and continue this beating and banging. <laughs> Short track racing, we saw a sample of that. Of course, last year, uh, Kurt Busch uh, at Bristol, where we'll head next week, held off Jimmy Spencer. NASCAR fans, if you missed the secret car earlier today, you can still enter the Via NASCAR Grand Marshal for a Day contest. Tune into the first hour after the green flag drops and the Winston Cup races. Look for that secret number on the animated car. Log on to NASCAR.com or FoxSports.com. And be a NASCAR Grand Marshal for a day. The contest continuing next week here on Fox when we show you Bristol. And the McDonald's drive through Championship. We'll keep an eye on those pit stops. And the pre-race show will continue to update. And we saw some amazing pit stops today. And again, uh, next week, the scene shifts to Bristol, one of the uh, one of the great tracks in NASCAR. Another full weekend. Friday, the NASCAR Bush Series qualifying. That's on speed, followed by NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying on Fox Sports Net. Saturday, NASCAR Bush Series racing on FX, followed by Winston Cup practice. Sunday, start your day with NASCAR this morning. Smirnoff Ice Triple Black on Fox Sports Net presents that. The pre-race show with uh, the race from Bristol on Fox beginning at 1230 Eastern and there is Ricky Craven the only Pontiac in the top 10 this year and now the only Pontiac to win and what a win it was as it was a terrific race here the faces of determination fearless in the face of the lady in black and a race really of five parts Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading and then Mark Martin and then Jeff Gordon Kurt Busch taking over and at the end the only time that Ricky Craven led in this race was when it mattered the most and that was at the end of the race, and he is the one who tamed the track that was supposedly too tough to tame. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox.